You're tuned into Argoon Radio, brought to you by UTB Worldwide. Download our app, available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. It's just a lifestyle. Don't trip. Yeah, Seal, Seal came, dropped that yeah. classic, and was like, yeah, I'm done. Hold on, yeah, that's what I was doing. He got, he got hella albums. Do we? Hell yeah. He got a best of that first album? Oh, you looked it up? What albums are yeah. still? Yeah, best of Seal. He got Seal Winter. <laughs> Seal Christmas. <laughs> a best of after your only album? Yeah, crazy. the best. Yeah, if you have a best that's of after crazy. the first album. That means you got too many slaps. Yeah, just <laughs> and you just got to be like, we running it back, my nigga. We running it right back right now. I bet Lauryn Hill has a best of. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. That pisses me off. Oh, that does count. Okay, you're right. You're right. Hold on. Now I gotta look up Seal. He got hell albums. Hold on. Let's see. He was just overshadowed. Seal has 91. First album, Seal. Yeah. Second album. Wait. Does he have two Seal albums? 91 and 94. He had to get that off again. (laughs) I just want you to see it, so I know I'm not tripping. Yes, 91 and 94. That's 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 very bold. bold. You know how scared I'll be to put out a song the, the, the same title? Like, man, they gonna think it's the same shit. Yep. Hold on. Like, We're gonna do a whole rollout for the same We doing the name. same shit. We running Hold it on. back. Then he has a human being, Seal 4, then Live in Paris, then he just started. Seal 4? Yeah, Seal <laughs> 4. <laughs> Wait, he has a Seal 7. <laughs> Wait, he skipped it. Now he has a Seal 6 and Seal 7. Wow. He just wants license for- and he has a Soul 2. He's really into He's the numbers. Here, yeah. Yeah, that's when he started getting that uh, 94.7 away money. Yo, yep. he started yeah. dropping compilations. His yeah. bag is crazy. On the, on hey, you know who no one talks about? <laughs> His wave bag is crazy. Hey. His wave bag is crazy. His wave yes. bag is, yes. hey, bro. Yes, that is fact. He gets probably like 10 Gs in publishing just from 94.7 away. Yeah. Just show up. <laughs> do, 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 do. I love that song. <laughs> yeah. Time keep on slipping, slipping, Instantly. slipping. Into the future. <laughs> hey, for the record, <laughs> that song's great and it's a cover. Cause that's not even his song. Really? That's a Steve Miller band song. Wow. Fly like an eagle. That. Yeah. Oh, that's fly. It's the same. Hold on. Wow. I'm gonna look at. Hold on. Yeah, that messed me up right now. No, this is good. No, I hope we're rolling. Really? Cause I'm making a point right now. Cause he didn't. Hold on. Steve Miller band. That's the original Space Jam slab. Hold on. <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought that, that was his joint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, same damn. everything. Wow. Uh, he was just like, oh yeah, I could I could remake this and nobody would know. Yeah. And have Michael Jordan doing yeah. some shit. He was... Wow, oh, yeah. that hurts. Yeah. He remade that and said, yeah, I'm gonna do that better though. Yep. YouTube's probably gonna flag it, but fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> we here. Yeah. We'll talk about that mid-episode. They only get 10 seconds. Go look it up. Steve Miller Man, Fly Steve Like an Eagle. Man, it's crazy. the same song as Seal, Fly Like an Eagle. That's fucking crazy. That's Mandela Effect right now? Good cover. <sighs> I, that's a big rare fact again. What were we saying is the fact the rare news fact rare fact player. <laughs> when I when I drop a bomb, we're saying that, okay? And that's okay. a rare fact. Rare fact Niggas player. didn't know that. I like that. <laughs> All right, we good? We in? All right, man. It's the man with the plan. I ain't Clark Kent, but some of the ladies do call me Superman. It's your boy Big Cali. Ooh, rare Argoon Dream Hef. <laughs> and this is Argoon Radio, man. We are here with another one. Mm-hmm. Feeling good, feeling great as usual. Come on. This is this is a brother of not only lifestyle, but motherfuckers. Let's just say in the IE, you better know who the fuck this motherfucker oh, is. Man. I'ma say it. He he's very humble, but I'll say it. One of the greatest producers that came out of the Inland Empire, man. came out of SoCal. Beat battles, he didn't did it. He did the verses before the verses. Come on. <laughs> I seen it, my nigga. I he got some dubs under his belt, too. It wasn't like he was just on. competing, my nigga. Yep. He was out there doing some shit. This man has his own YouTube courses before it was popping, pre-pandemic. Come on. <laughs> okay? He's been getting that streaming shit, the streaming checks before it was fashionable. We didn't know about that shit. Man. He did some Moses shit. He went to the top of the mountain and came back and was like, look, niggas, I got the jug. <laughs> this is how you Y'all trying it. to get signed to get these plaques. Mm-hmm. I'm on YouTube Y'all not with listening. It. Y'all don't want to hear me. They, they like, oh, I got it without hey. it. <laughs> this is motherfucking Curtis King in the building. Man, yeah. thank you so much for having me on. Like, I, I was telling you via text, um, I didn't tell you, but I'm like, this is a, uh, this is checkbox moments Stop. right here. This dead ass, this checkbox. I remember seeing y'all doing the the the, the podcast. And I remember like, man, one day I'm gonna get on there. One day I'm gonna get on there. <laughs> and I just randomly text you. And I'm like, yep. yo, is this is this something that we can do? And I'm like, you see, like it's time. So it's honestly an honor to uh, to be here. I appreciate oh, yeah. both of y'all. 
Yeah. Bro. It's we, destiny for you to be on here. Like facts. I'm glad we got a plan around something though, because you got a new album coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means yeah. DC just heard right now that has all slaps. All on it. Come slaps. On. All motherfuckers <laughs> no slaps. fucking cap. I was gonna be cool, <laughs> but I'm coming in hot. I told him I wrote up two doobies. I'm ready. It ain't a game. The shit's all good. Ten songs. Yes. Mm-hmm. What's Ten it called, songs. by the way? DIY too. Okay. DIY. So do, do it, it yourself. Do it your fucking self. Oh, I added yeah. the F to it. Come he on. Didn't say it. <laughs> Come on. I, I said it. Okay. <laughs> I get it. DIY too. DIY. D-I-F-Y. That'd yes. That would have been hilarious. That's mm-hmm. the uncensored version. Yeah, yeah. We're mm-hmm. going to do that. We're going to drop the OnlyFans version for the real motherfuckers. Come on now. Damn. That's really, that no. want to see the other shit. <laughs> see, when you were cussing motherfuckers out, like, nah, nigga, I want to snare this way. <laughs> no, it's all good. No, no it's, it's a follow-up to uh, a project I did 10 years ago. Oh, shit. Which was DIY. And um, it's crazy because the idea came during a live stream. Uh, one of my listeners that, even through the times I wasn't creating music, you always mm-hmm. got that person that's just like, they, they're either constantly checking for you or they're at least checking up on you and, and reminding you of the impact you had on them. And so uh, shout out to the homie Tone from um, from Bakersfield. Okay. Shout he, out Tone. Man, he he was the reason why this project came together because we're in a live stream and he's like, man, have you ever thought about doing a follow-up to DIY? And it was four pictures of me. It was two pictures of me in the present moment in 2012 and two pictures of me as a kid. He was like, yo, <laughs> What if you redid that, <clears throat> but this time put your son in the place of you as a kid? Damn. Damn. And sometimes it takes that little mustard seed yeah. that just hey. runs your brain, and my brain started going off. I'm telling you, like, I was like... Around what time did this start happening? Like, what? Around three months what ago. Damn. Oh, so you made all those songs? All of this in the last three months. Wow. So, hey, y'all well, niggas better step your game up, man. <laughs> well, no, let, let, me, let me give a little okay, context. Bad, a little context. No, shit. no, I appreciate it, but let me give a little context. Like, the last year was the first time that I ever got into a live stream. I do a live stream on my YouTube called Flocation, where I'll spend anywhere from four hours to seven hours just literally cooking up in front of strangers or friends and folks that are, you know, anybody who shows up to the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And in the stream, I I got an opportunity to redefine myself as an artist because never had I had to create in front of people except for the people on the records. Right. I feel you. This was the first like time. Like just an audience? Just, just like an audience. Like That's I never a little bit different. It's That's a, a little different, different experience. And you don't know who looking because sometimes there's not a name to a number. You might have 60, 70 people in there and only 20 of them are actually leaving comments and talking. So yeah. it's interesting. It's but a bunch of niggas listening. For real. Yep, for real. Yeah. So you never know. But I tell you, man, that experience, I created probably like 76 songs last year. Um, that went super under the radar because I didn't promote them. It was just a matter of, I want to teach myself mixing first. And secondly, mm. I want to really learn like who the fuck I am right. after I really give time to this craft and see like, I don't know, like every time you do a project as an artist, artists can relate to this where you'll get to a certain level and then you got to stop right there to promote the project, to do the mm. press run. Mm. I was like, what would happen if I didn't stop? Yeah. What happened if I consistently did kind of the things that you heard like back in the day, 50 Cent and even like more recent Young Thug having hundreds and hundreds of songs and then picking the best 15 for a project. I'd never done that. Yeah. If I did 20, them 20 is going on a project. This is the first time I had a whole year to really just hone my craft, get a process down. And then as I started to work on this project, I only ended up using two of those 56 God damn. Just two. But those 56 led to me being so fluid when I'm making music. Shit is not forced no more. And at one point in time, it was really forced. I was going to say, when did it click where it was like, literally, you're just like, oh, yeah. Like, at what number would you say? Because you're at 56. Yeah. Was it like at beat 20? You're like, nigga, I got this shit. I'm about to just keep going. Dude. I can't tell you what number. I can just tell you a feeling where it was like, nobody who's watching me is above mistakes. So why are you holding why are you holding this un why are you holding this unrealistic standard on yourself and why are you why are you trying so hard to impress or whatever you is you're trying to do the moment that voice said that the other voice in my head that talks me out of shit shut up yeah. mm. and it was like great things happen when I shut that voice up I shut the fuck up because this process is not about me I know it comes from a higher power I know these ideas are not just because mm-hmm. I'm so great. These ideas are flooding down. I can't explain them. And so when I get in there and I make the music, man, I just now I'm like, I allow it to happen. Quincy Jones had a quote where he was like, when you're making music, leave a window open and leave room for God to come in. Yep. Mm-hmm. I was like, I didn't know what it quite with that minute. Niggas don't understand that. That's, I read man, that in his book. In that's, Q, the, the audio. He said what do that you take sure. from that? I, like, literally, 
sometimes you take that point. I, here it is. As me as a DJ working with a lot of different producers, mm -hmm. I see that sometimes producers will hear a beat and it'll be so good that they don't even believe it. Yeah. So they're like, I got to add some more shit to it. Yeah. Sometimes you <laughs> So I got to do something else. I'm going to add yeah. an extra hi-hat yeah. yeah. just because yeah. I know our cowbell or yeah. something. Yeah. And then I'll come in and be like, yeah, take that cowbell. I'll take this out Look. and bring it back. Because yeah. you got to leave room <laughs> for it to breathe. Mm -hmm. How about this? Yeah. I remember Michael Jackson when he was doing the uh, This Is It. And mm -hmm. one of those swag that part, he was the band was going in. He was yeah. like, wait, wait, wait. He knew. Let it breathe. <laughs> Let it simmer. Let it simmer. With he love. did. Yes, he did. With love. The whole band that was listening yeah. to it. He was like, you just gotta bring it. Like da da ba mm -hmm. ba da. <laughs> and, so, and it literally did the whole shit. And yeah. then I was like, I get it though. Yeah, what you gonna so, tell Michael too? You gonna tell Michael no? Nah, yeah. too many plaques. <laughs> you gonna tell Way Michael too no? Too many plaques. <laughs> he will fire you. I won't say that damn word Michael said something. Like, That's sure, right. Bro, you yep, got it. Right. Yeah. Michael says, is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Is that right? All right. He's working with Quincy. What's your name? Okay. Hello. Okay. Paul? Yeah. Okay, cool. Man. Hey, man. Any person that jugs Paul McCartney, I got to fuck with him forever. <laughs> he straight up did it like no, Gary that, Indiana style. Niggas don't even talk about that. That might have been the greatest finesse of the century. Ever. He was like, I'm just going to buy your entire oh, catalog. yeah, yeah, and he yeah. did that. Straight jug, dream. He did I that. I don't even think about that. That's something that happened so long ago, I don't even think about that. He for sure is getting he, checks. Man. Bro, God look, damn. How about this? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Paul, McCart Paul McCartney straight up told Mike, like, hey, yeah, so my shit's, you know, going to be on sale soon. Me and the boys probably going to get it. Michael's like, oh, word. <laughs> Too much so info. He was like, cool. He, he, <laughs> he hit him with lawyer. Yeah. He was like, hey, yo, Sony about to sell this for how much? How much I got in savings? Come on. <laughs> All right, bet. Let's just wire that over. And then did the Girl Is Mine video. Yeah. Finished the video. Wow. Finished everything. Videos out. Thrillers out. Piece of work. <laughs> and then he owns everything. Yeah. He doesn't just own like the beat. Paul drops something. Paul he mm -hmm. gets signed. MJJ checks. Michael Joseph Jackson <sighs> Publishing. It don't yeah. say Sony for yeah. years. Michael is paying them. That's Those are the crazy. examples that 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 we 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 leave from though, because sh they they show us they move the baton, they move the 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 bar higher, and they show us like yo, so much of this is out here for the taking, mm -hmm. and you can if you just simply ask. There was yeah. a point in time where. I released a, a, a plugin called Tape Boy, which is like a cassette tape emulator for producers to use uh, so that they can make their sound sound like it came off of cassette tape. Okay. And it, it was called uh, a Tape Boy, but it was after Talk Boy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember Talk Boy was from Home Alone, right? Yeah. There was a genuine conversation at one time about the possibility of if this campaign that I was on, if it launched well, that we would be in discussions about buying Talk Boy. Because it's Damn. at that stage where it's the, whoever's in, invested in it is not interested in trying to expand it. They made an app for it, and that was that. But it's like, yeah. that's the kind of conversations that right. the 20-year-old Curtis is like, there's no way in hell that's even within it's reach. Yeah. You start but realizing it. You think about the Michael Jacksons who set that as as the, the standard. It's like, no, sky's, sky's really the limit. But mm -hmm. you know what people don't understand is, though, Mike started at. Five, six. Oh yeah, he's yeah. been in the industry when he was Facts. like eight, nine in Facts. the real industry. Yeah, like his peers was like Marvin Gaye, yeah. fucking Diana Ross, <laughs> yeah. Temptations. It was like, all right, we're gonna drop ABC, then we're gonna drop Diana Ross, then yeah. we're gonna drop Marvin. Like, yeah. This little boy was competing in the charts mm -hmm. with these grown ass giants. Mm -hmm. So by the and, time and, he was twenty, fucking with Quincy, yeah, he was like a vet. He been in this shit. So he was like, oh, I'll buy your whole shit. You don't even know about publishing. And his mm -hmm. daddy was Joe Jackson. Talk about. It. One of the like, coldest motherfuckers of all time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on, the coldest man. Like, niggas. Say what you yeah. want. I think we always, and, and it's, I don't think it's by chance that we always, when we hear about like the 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 black men and black women behind the scenes, we only get one side of them. They were this, they were that. Like even <laughs> yeah. when it comes to like Ike Turner, yeah, he did some. We didn't see the movie, we didn't see all that stuff, but we only hear love, about love his Proud darkest Mary. moments. Yeah, we never hear about well, why was this even a lucrative situation for Tina Turner to be a part of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like we never get to celebrate the wholeness. All that shit. Yeah. Like yeah, we they had some he was pretty... getting, he was getting hella not to cut you yeah, off, you but good, he was good. getting hella advances from labels back then. I like mean, dummy money, like. Oh yeah, you're gonna come. We'll give you X amount of millions up front before the album. Right. Mm -hmm. But then he will snort up seventy percent of the money, <laughs> and yeah. then at that last twenty five, he yeah. will flip it. Come on. And it will work again. He just I, did it again. Look, yeah. one thing that Solitude has taught me, and I know that you know, there's probably folks who will watch that no, and be yeah, like, yeah. and be like, uh, oh, uh, you know, it's cancel season or whatever. But it's like I look at it like this: you can't take the good in good in your life 
singular and think that the bad had nothing to do with the good. Mm -hmm. There's no way in hell. There's a duality to everything. No, it's a duality. And I think that it's hard for us to see that duality when we're constantly in motion, we constantly got distractions and cell phones and social media. Mm -hmm. Um, This project is the product of me being so far away from everything to where it was like, you got to really face your demons. You got to really face your duality and the things that you don't like about yourself. And you got to let that shit have its day so that you can really make a change with whatever it is that you want to make a change with. But I look at those characters, I look at Joe Jackson, I'm like, if you think that Michael Jackson is Michael Jackson without Joe Jackson, you don't know Joe Jackson. Impossible. Facts. Talk about it. Good and bad, right? Talk about it. Good and bad, because that has to shape who you are. So Mm -hmm. it's like, there's people in my life, bro, that it's like, have done me quote unquote dirty, but it's like, shit, had you not been that way, I would not have this chip on my shoulder. I would not have, insert whatever you want to insert, I can't say that I'm happy and not appreciate the contribution that that terrible bad shit had to the part of the story. Well, Michael yeah. Jordan would be Michael Jordan if he didn't make it on that uh, high school team. <clears throat> Possibly would, not. Would, yeah. would Kobe be as a dog as Kobe? And we both, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, we come both on. Now, this. We, we did not plan we this. Didn't plan we didn't plan this, by the way, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is just God and let us know we had yeah. to drop this. Synergy. Yeah, but yeah, look, yeah. Would Kobe be Kobe if he didn't get played his rookie year the way he got played? Mm-hmm. Like, literally, Or, or even the thing that happened in Colorado. Like, Fat, come on, you know man. That's when he really they turned into the Mamba. Eat. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm exiting out everything. Every fuck and the I'm just whole getting to work world. Now. Well, let's take another level, level, a level on top of that. When supposedly, allegedly, his parents weren't having communication with him when he won that championship. Yeah. And then that iconic photo where he's yeah. sitting there and he's sad with the championship jacket and the mm. trophy. It's like, yeah. it's like, how much more Mamba can you be if your biggest, highly celebrated moment, you can't even enjoy with the people you love the most. Who do you have to become to like yeah, yeah. P- pick your chin back up and go from there? Yeah. I've never heard it like that. Straight That's deep. Right? Like how deep you have to go into it where you're just like, fuck it, I can't even be around no one. It's just, I mean, yeah. I have to, it's you my team, yeah. it's yeah. Phil. Yeah. And that's it right now. Yeah. And it's my family. I love Damn. my family. I love my whatever, I love but. I love them, yeah. but how deep in the fuck it bag do you have to go in order to still pick your chin up and move from that stage. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in that because I feel like, even like with now, like there's so much conversation around mental health and it's like, it's like, dog, everybody's saying you need to check on your friends. Everybody's saying that we need to have more conversations about mental health, but the last thing we need to do is have another conversation about the conversation about mental health. Yeah. Like, let's talk about this shit. Let's lay this shit out and realize like, no matter how fucked up a thing that somebody does, um, that's not ultimately what fully defines them. Right, yeah. their their True. their rise in fame, their rise in relevance, that has a part of the good in them as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I this is something that you can't talk to a lot of people about. I know mm-hmm. I can talk to y'all about this, but it's like because it gets that, dark. It like, gets no, wet. no, no, this person did this terrible thing, and that's yeah. all they are. And it's like <clears throat> if we judge you by your worst day, what would that look like? Yeah, he without he without sin cast the first stone, bro. I, Said it, but come on. That's how swagged out <laughs> Jesus was oh, in he real knew. life. He, he really was on some real G shit. He was like, hey, I think look, real talk. Yeah. I can't judge my mans because all y'all niggas is really fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah, didn't yeah. say that, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he said that in so many ways. In a sense, yeah. Yeah. So it's like as artists, it's crazy the way, and this is why I have arguing radio and we have the show because mm-hmm. this is a place where I feel artists come and talk and just be yeah. themselves. This Facts. is the got you journalism. Which is why I took a shot. I yeah. was like, I was like, hey, nah. why not? Because <laughs> we like, nah, here. No, but here's the thing. I can't promise every interview gonna be like this, but this mm-hmm. is the point where I want artists to come and be themselves because you guys are vessels. Mm. You guys aren't even necessarily like, I call you human because you are human, but your right. purpose on life is to give and to give that message in a way so people can be receptive right. and change upon themselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. You could be here to see it, you may not be here to see it, but your job's here to do it. So yeah. let's at least document it. And that's why I even going to the Kobe's, going to the, the Tupac's, the, right. web, the Nipsey's, right, right, their right. legacies is like, sometimes what game do you choose to play? Mm-hmm. Yeah, some yeah. niggas just want to do art to do mm-hmm. art. Then some people was like, no, like I know I have a purpose. When mm-hmm. you write the books, the the prosperous hip hop producer, mm-hmm. whether you're here or not, not to be morbid, mm-hmm. this is gonna be here. Some kid can randomly find this yeah. and be like, hey, I read this book about some guy Curtis King talking mm-hmm. about how to be a hip. I don't know. He has some crazy stories, and what, you could scan it that's and what, see some shit, like you know. So piggybacking off of that, that's what. I think we're all a product of, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a product of reading books from people that I've never met mm-hmm. that died years before I was born. And I was able to like take these thoughts that they kind of baton my way and was like, you know what? 
even though I'm in this year and you were in that year, there's something I can do with Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. There's something I can do with yes. uh, uh, Jim Rohn. Even though he's talking to an audience in the, in the 70s, early 80s, I can take some of that and absorb that in 2022, uh, uh, Les Brown. And so it's like when people, for instance, people see my Instagram and they see these videos that are going viral, I'm like, there's nothing new under the sun. Like, this is what I got from the Les Browns. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I was looking up a video for Napoleon something that Napoleon you were talking Hill. about. Napoleon Hill, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Napoleon Hill. God, it was Come in on. my thing. I was trying to look yeah. it up because then, then fucking YouTube. It's all good. Because <laughs> I was looking, I was like, what the hell was it? Because I wanted to bring yeah. it up. So sorry to cut you, you off. You good, you good. I did not know who Napoleon Hill was. Yeah. And somebody was like, you need to listen. And he gave the most simplest form of how Come to on, think man. like a successful person. Yeah. Not even something. He was like, it's this miraculous thing we have in life where it's like, we can control our destiny. Yeah. But we don't take the time to understand what take what it takes to control your own destiny. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I had a homie We just mind. don't. We like, don't, bro. We don't. And, and I had a homie in mind. And, I, and I'm looking at this studio. And I'm just like in amazement of, of, shout out of, of, of what y'all are doing. This is amazing. It's beautiful to see y'all build. I had a homie that had to remind me today um, of we take, we underestimate how much eight, nine, whatever, whatever the billion people amount on, on the earth are and how close to 90% is not an exaggeration to say that they would never have the opportunities we have. Yeah. Facts. Like we are, Fair we enough. are of the few, not to say we're so above anybody. It's mm -hmm. just the fact that sometimes it's luck plays a part in it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the fact that where we were born and whatever we choose to do, whatever we choose to get into, uh, who our parents were, or whoever we were raised by, all these factors play in to the point where we have an abundance in places that mm. most folks couldn't imagine. So when I take that in consideration, it helps me to understand like just how large of a platform that we have, how large of a responsibility we have, and also too, just the pure abundance of this shit. And I think it takes folks like the Napoleon Hills sometimes to talk to you from a time that you can't relate to so that you know it's real. Yeah, that's that's that what makes I was sense? gonna say, because yeah. the, yeah. the shit he says, Reeve, is like, it's so simple. It's like, yeah. well, of course, like, say it to yourself every day, because most people don't say it to themselves right. every day. Yeah. But then you say it so much that you have to believe it, because mm. if you don't believe it, then it won't really happen. Well, yeah. Yeah. And it's, well, yeah. But as simple as that sounds, like, yeah. as and I can say as far as me, and then maybe you can piggyback on it too, mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur out here, as an artist trying to do it yourself as far as production, mm -hmm. hiring, payroll, all mm, that shit. Yeah. Doing it yourself, you'd be like, all right, bro, is this really going to work? For sure. Is it really <laughs> like, is this really it? Because yeah. like, because it would be a lot easier just to work for something else and just like build their shit up because there's already some funding Absolutely. there. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the only difference. It's yeah. already funding there and it's a proof of concept that somehow gained a profit. So yeah. now they can afford a staff, but you could do the same thing if you just believe. Mm -hmm. Somehow it just works up just like with Jesus breaking the loaf and the fish. Yeah, Somehow everyone sure, gets sure. fed. I don't know how it works, but you have to think deeper. And that's what he was saying to Pauline Hill. You have to know yeah. it's a higher source too that's doing mm -hmm. this. And, and, and you, you get a reminder how simple, how easy it is, even though it's not simple. Yeah. Right? It, it, and I'm maybe the flip side around. I got a little liquor in me, but. No, it, I'm if, good. If no, no, you make it sense. If, if, if it's easy, right? So there's a lot of things that there's things that are easy, right? Of course, there's three steps, but it's not. I shouldn't say it's simple, but it's not easy. It's simple, yes, three steps, but it's not easy to bring yourself to do the first step, or it's mm. not easy to take it to the next. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Napoleon Hills remind us, like, the same source that he pulls from to, to, to bring in that abundance is no different than what we're dealing with. He wrote that book, I think, in the 1920s? Yes. Damn. 2022, here we are still talking about that conversation. Same game being dropped. Same game. What difference is there outside of the 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 same shit, different toilet? It's like, just the yeah. decorations around have changed, right? Forget yeah. religion. The Bible's still debated. That's how cold a game Come on, man. Jesus or whatever you want to yeah, believe. It. Even yeah. Allah, you think about the Quran, like all these figures, yeah. their game, their pen was their vessel yeah, was man. so strong. They were yeah. so in that we debate them and damn they're gonna war yeah. about their words. Hell yeah. When they're still only talking about a singular source. And right. it's always positive too. Always niggas going, niggas going to war over some shit that's positive. No, like, hey, I'm man. gotta be the one because you gotta be <laughs> yeah. happy through my guy. You gotta be happy through my thing. That's real. They're just saying have a source. Yeah. 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 yeah, have a source, have a one that's outside of you, man. So, and that's and that's honestly, I kind of always want to ask you two, Curtis, because mm -hmm. first, I'm a fan, always. Like, of course, man. you, my brother. Likewise. Like, Come on you now. know, we you've been knowing me <laughs> since I first started, even before I DJ. Like that's back crazy. in the the whole uh, was the common ground days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black cloud, yeah. like that whole man. time in life. 
when y'all was just shut down the whole comic on the vibe. You know what? Y'all say that, but I don't think y'all understand our viewpoint of what y'all were doing. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's go. Let's like, go can I it. can I give y'all y'all roses? Because I had yeah. this when I was driving home, driving from here, from home. I was like, this is like a full circle moment because to me, y'all were the epitome of cool. And you still are, but you were the epitome of cool to us to where it was like, you guys did something that took us into our late 30s to quite understand mm -hmm. the law of attraction. You guys were that. You did that. Damn. And even still doing that. And that's so much that that's we learned love. from it because our shit was, as Black Cloud, was push, 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 get it in front of people by any means necessary. We're doing it by brute force. What time has taught me is that what you attract is so much better. Right. And I feel like y'all had a grasp of that. Even if you didn't understand all the, in its full capacity, we looked at that and I looked at that. I'm going to speak for myself. I looked at that and I looked up to that. So it's like, even sitting here with you right now, playing the music and then seeing that reaction, it's like, that means something to me. That means mm -hmm. something to me. And I'm like, I appreciate it because it's like, I remember so much of the, the up and coming story and I see how it, how it has flourished now. Uh, it means a lot to see that, but I'm like, I don't think that we, t I think sometimes we take for granted because we're so surrounded by greatness. We're surrounded by y'all. I've been yeah. surrounded by y'all. We take it for granted, like how rare this shit is to be. Like when you think about Buster Rhymes talking about being in high school with Jay-Z and, wow. and it's all so these, like, crazy. Like, like <laughs> that's, that's not a thing, right? Oh, uh, fucking Salt and Pepper, Martin Lawrence, and fucking yeah. Kid and Play all working at Sears together. At wow. That's not God, by, they that they all by, like, that, is, that is by design. <laughs> they all together hanging yeah. out, yeah. chilling. That is by design. I don't think that's by mistake. And I think that when we recognize that, it kind of takes us out of those low moments, which come to all of us in any creative venture. Mm. It takes us out of those moments and helps us realize like how, like we're not playing, we're not playing chess. <laughs> it's just yeah. not chess. We're not playing in two D. We're doing this shit in three D. And a lot of folks look to us, uh, they look to us as an example. They look to us as, damn, how how would they maneuver this? And they're watching us. And it's something that I had to have the homie today remind me of because I'm like, bro, like I needed to hear that because sometimes we get in so much in our fucking bubble and our circle that we're like. What's the next move? How do I level up yeah. this? We forget, mm -hmm. yeah. like, we're not playing a normal game. Mm -hmm. You have to take that time, bro. I would say I learned that from Reem, though, too. Right? Reem and Dre, like, setting up the whole foundation. I just follow what mm -hmm. I've been knowing, because mm -hmm. I can't really speak on... I can speak on building it, because I'm just now probably building my yeah. own kind of stomp and thing, what right, I'm doing. Right, right, Because a lot of it, I've been kind of blessed in. Like, bro, I was fucking just kicking it with these niggas Man. as friends. Yeah. And I just have a guy just so happy to let me slip and fall into some cool ass motherfuckers. Yeah. Smoking, smoking Swishers. <laughs> smoking Swishers. Smoking me. Drinking, <laughs> drinking, drinking Christian Brothers and Black It Out, drinking Black It Miles. <laughs> Shut up to the common ground. Come on, man. Doing a whole bunch of questionable stuff in the bathroom. <laughs> just having a good time. And it was vibes. <laughs> and I remember going there, but then it's like, yeah. These niggas still was working. They were going to the studio. They taught me renting studio time. I seen Man. Dre and Reem put their money up to get clothes to hopefully make some money. Yeah. Like niggas didn't have physical cash, but had $30,000 worth of clothes in the living room <clears throat> That's crazy, and a bro. bunch of connects. But literally, yeah. we all pieced it up for some Popeyes and Those times and are shit. so crazy because it's like, as a clothing line, I wasn't even thinking about it no other way, but like, I'm about to flip this money and I'm about to get it. It wasn't like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, I hope they sell. It was just like, I knew in my head, like, this shit was going to sell. What 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 do you think gave you that that confidence to kind of stay so centered at that point? I think because I've been an artist like my whole life, yeah. and then I was also very good at sports, so I understood like progress, working hard, mm. starting somewhere, and then by the end of the season, you look back like, damn, I'm way better now. Yeah. So having those kind of fused together, Dre being like the same way, right? We kind of just like naturally had that confidence because I feel like entrepreneurial mm -hmm. shit, you have to be accountable. If you yeah, are not accountable, yeah, for sure. yeah. you will eventually crash and burn. Yeah, yeah And it might start one. off real good, too. <laughs> or you will eventually crash and We've burn. We've seen it, bro. Yeah, we've seen it. It happens all the time. People people just, yeah, it happens all the time. All, all shake. All, what is, all, all, all bake, no shake. <laughs> all bake, no shake. They and ain't shaking no shake. <laughs> I, I, and and I, I can't even lie to you. Like, hearing you say that is, is, is encouraging because even me, here I am, Damn near my 20th something year of doing music, right? Mm -hmm. Congratulations, um, by the way, bro. That's nuts. That's, that's nuts not to even think about. That's not normal, bro. 2002 yeah. was when I started, like, like really saying I'm gonna do this. But mm -hmm. I hear those stories and it's encouraging because I look at it like there's certain things that I go through even in this year right now that I thought were beyond me. Yeah. And I had to be humble. Like yeah. I was like, this shit's not gonna happen again. And it's like, no, this shit gonna get uncomfortable again. Uh -huh. It's gonna get like to a point where you're like, 
there is no there is like I'm starting to learn that there is no there is no uh singular levels, right? You just kind of mm. like move up and then there's levels within this level and there's levels within this level. Yeah. And it may be similar to some of the shit you dealt with in the beginning, but you're still here with now the experience and all the other things that mm -hmm. come along with that. I'm learning that this year to the point where it's like, this music is a product of one of the hardest post-pandemic or just the hardest times I've had, period, post-pandemic for my business. Yeah. Like my business went, like there was shit that just didn't make any sense that was just falling by the wayside. There was this ad sort of apocalypse situation that happened with Facebook ads. I've heard about, yeah. Man, yeah, like, I've heard so about those. That a lot of niggas that, was talking about that. Bro, it cost Niggas me, was losing money on bro, that Facebook ad shit. That shit was no joke. 10 racks plus I lost in oh, that situation. I hate that. And it was at a time where it was like, I wasn't taking money and necessarily saving it. I was taking money and reinvesting it into my ideas. Yeah. Because I was like, this shit is going to go. The same thing you're talking about with the confidence. Like, yeah. I had the confidence, but yeah. sometimes the confidence... Uh, doesn't line up with what the market is doing. Mm -hmm. And I ran into a situation Facts. where it left me vulnerable. And it was like, I was talking to the homie about this today. I was like, I'm grateful that this shit happened when I'm 37. Mm -hmm. I hear T-Pain talk about it sometimes too, when he lost all his situation. But I'm like, I'm glad it happened at 37 because there's a level of maturity, there's a level of patience, a level of keeping my shit together and not going off the deep end where I'm yeah. like, Dog, this shit is ebbs and flows. I know what part of the story this is. Right. Because yeah. I saw it at level one. Yeah. Right. Level two. Level. Right. So now at this point, I'm not having any expectations with it except for, Tony Robbins always says it, life is happening for you and not to you. One more time. Nigga, I don't think, I, I don't think niggas on. understood how much of a bar that Come was. On. I love little tidbits yeah. like that. That's some yeah. real nigga shit. Go ahead. I, I had never heard anybody say it like that, but it's so simple. Life is happening for you and not to you. We look at all these situations that happen to us and we're thinking like, damn, this is my story. Shit, somebody did this to me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this job situation happened <clears throat> this way and this is the reason why I'm sitting in this predicament. It's like, no, life is always happening for your ultimate benefit. And if you believe that, there is opportunity in every single situation that you're in. I For had an sure. epiphany today that was like, I had to go through that bullshit to recognize just how abundant I'm living. This is the degree of issues I'm dealing with right now. Yeah, it's not 20, even that, it's not is, even that bad. It's light. 20-year-old <laughs> me would laugh at me. 20-year-old yeah. me be like, that's what you're dealing with? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to afford toilet paper. What are you doing right Yo, now? Yo, I never even thought about that. Man, I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, I, yeah. I know you're a vessel right now because it's crazy. It's hitting home because even in my life, like, yeah. when, I, when I moved to L.A., my goal was like, okay, got to get to L.A. Right. Got to, like, somehow make my own production. I even get emotional thinking about it. I'm like, dang, that's real. Because I was like, I have to do it. have to get it. Worked, pandemic whole pandemic happened, mm -hmm. things was not popping, no gigs, mm -hmm. started doing lift, started doing all kind of shit By just to means. get it. Yeah. So I was like, I can't give up, can't get it. Then Knockouts came through, did mm -hmm. the whole thing, now I'm managing the studio, on, now I'm doing, yeah. now I got the shows popping, you know, and now I'm producing other shows and doing albums. <laughs> yeah. But then it was like, but I still complained throughout the day, like, I'm complaining about very like shit that at 20 years old, yeah. Like, bro, you're in a fucking studio. Look at the degree this of is your all problems. you ever yeah. wanted, bro. All it's you hard ever... to see it when you in it. When you yes. in that shit, you like, and, this shit is no real. It's like on my shoulders, shit, but bro. Like... It's, it's problems now that I'm like, 20 year old me, hell, even sometimes the early 30, I'm 37 right now, the early 30 year old me would be like, Nigga, that's what you want right now? Bro, I'm 33 yeah. right now, so I'm in that Come on, that man. It's like, like, you complain about that? It's like, it's you, not you, that you forget deep. where we come it's from? It's really not. And it's, then he hates hearing all my complaints. I, I he would cuss about you. every one of my complaints. I'd be cussing this shit out, bro. I don't even tell him shit about it. Because he's like the person. I'm like, bro, I can't. These niggas, they talking about I got to do this. What the fuck, nigga? They got to know who I am. What's your reaction? What do you? How you? How are you responding to that? I'm I'm really, like, cutthroat with it. I'm going to say, like, yeah, I'm for real cutthroat. Like, if someone comes to me with, like, some BS problems, yeah. Maybe if like, maybe if you're like really, really young, yeah, I might be like, no, I might give it to you a little, right, a little, little cookie cutter. <laughs> but if you're like anywhere like in your late twenties and thirties, like I'm gonna be straight up with you, like, yeah. because I know like everybody who I know who is currently rich, millionaire, mm -hmm. they all went through shit. Mm -hmm. Everybody went through shit. They went mm -hmm. through hella shit. They most of them started hella young doing what they're doing, mm -hmm. and now they're like in their bag in their stride. That's and it's boring. like a lot of people they'll be like they won't even try nothing and right. they'll be complaining about something stupid and I'll be right. like you haven't even done nothing to be yeah. even complaining about nothing I remember, at least get to yeah. level one before you even say something yeah that, that's that that's you know what I'm saying? I mean, no, 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 go ahead, go I was ahead. like that's that's 
that's heavy because a lot of folks, and you start to recognize, like, you look at somebody, especially as an artist to artist, I look mm -hmm. at certain people and I'm like, fuck, you got all the talent in the world, more talent than I, I got in my, like, you have it, you have it, I don't yeah. have that. Yeah. And you wonder, like, how does shit just fall off like that? Yeah. I don't think people fall off. I think that life starts doing things to them mm -hmm. where they start to recognize who they truly are. I used to have this thing, and I told mm -hmm. Noah, I was like, it might have been like a high thought or whatever, but I told him, I said, have you ever thought about when you're going into a venue like Common Ground, if everybody was like the Sims and they had a dollar amount for how much they would sell out what they're currently working on, yeah. what do you think that would be? Would you be surprised by the results that you see? Mm -hmm. that's and I started that's looking it. at that and I started that's listening heavy. to the conversations differently. Like, damn, that's a lot of people in here who talk a big game and not just that venue, but just in general. You go on the venues, they talk yeah. a big game about all the shit they're working on and what they do. Oh, yeah. Little especially do you in know. the industry, though. The bigger it gets, Come on, bro. it gets even darker. It we can say Comic Ground, that's one level, but I remember on tour. Come on, man. Oh, my God. Reed, you remember I used to come at you like, hey, this dude right here, <laughs> he said that he can get us this, 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 and this. All we got to do yeah. is do a collab. He just wants a UTV because You're like, all right, well, nah. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. And we were laughing all the day because one of our little niggas, I remember at the time I was like, I remember at the time I was head, like, head over heels about having a UTV collab with this nigga. He was like, Nah, he needs to do his own thing. He needs to figure wow. out his own shit. Ray and then maybe in the future, it. you know, it might yeah. come back around. But what he called it, yeah. and then it yeah. ended up breaking up like a year later. Yeah, wow. everything just went to shit a year yeah. later. He called that shit. What space do you do you have? Like, what space are you operating from when you're able to? I'm always like intrigued by this because I have mm -hmm. a, my best friend. Um, he's like the same thing, in that you're able to operate from a space that doesn't move too quickly and doesn't move too slow. Where do you think that comes from? Mm, good question. Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> I've always like, wondered that about you too, Reed, because I don't have yeah. that. Because it's, it's, I think it's just understanding myself and understanding life, because you just, when you really think about how big, like, the industry is, mm -hmm. like, art, music, everything, and you think about people that were popping in next year, you you might talk about them three years from now, like, damn, I remember him. Yeah. When you think about everything, like... All inclusive. You just realize that it's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> and if you want like a big legacy yeah. and you want things to like be uh be bigger than what you are, right, then you gotta move like what you say, uh not too slow. Not too yeah. slow, not too it, not it's too it's fast. almost like a stoicism yeah. to it, man. And it's yeah. something that I'll be honest with you, I I saw it with you, I saw it with with with, with the team years mm -hmm. ago, and I, it was hard for me to grasp that because I was so like I was so like this, like, oh man, okay, this opportunity, this look, this look, this look. Mm -hmm. And it took me getting my ass kicked in this industry mm, yeah. before I recognized like, shit, move more like that. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to make more solid decisions. Like there's been times where finance, financially, I was making decisions that my heart wasn't in. And every single time, it didn't matter how much I got paid, I regret it saying yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's I for sure done the smoky gig. Yeah. Especially when I was deep on some fucking, <laughs> when I was deep in my drug phases, yeah. Reem came to a few of my girls like, hey, yeah. bro, you gonna give me 500. And this is when I was doing hella narcotic. I'm four years sober now. Yeah. So I always talk about, that, thank bro. you. I always, but I always do like background talks about shit yeah. that I did in the past. But one of my times, the dude was like, yeah, I got you on drugs all night and I'm gonna give you $150. <sighs> that's, that's a crazy but writer. That writer, is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that writer is crazy. Because it's an endless number. What does yeah, that mean? Like, it yeah. could be this, it could be that. Maybe yeah. I'll pay you, maybe and I don't. If I get addict, you imagine as an addict, I'm doing this. So now I'm not even yeah. doing it for the love. I'm doing it for a need of an addiction. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. so I'm DJing, but then in the sick of this, how much of a comedian God is, mm -hmm. he ended up making me fucking nice because I'm DJing eight hours straight. Mm -hmm. Yay up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to fucking mix this and this and this and yeah, this and yeah, this yeah. and this. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, it's like, why is this a party? Right. So even throughout my sickness and the craziness, God still yeah. knew how to shine the light. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until I totally took over it and just gave up and shed it all. That's when I lost the weight. Moved to yeah. LA, DJ the Come Coachellas, on, yeah. whatever you could think Nuts. of. That's when yeah. everything started opening. So now it's just like, yeah. I get it now. So, yeah. but what did you think when you moved to LA? Were you thinking, I hope this works out? Or were you thinking, I know it's going to work out? I know it's going to work out. Okay, cool. See, that, 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 that means that you grew up when you moved to LA. Can I be honest? Yes. Yeah. Can I be honest with you? Mm -hmm. It wasn't even like it has to work out because it just, I'm a Capricorn, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So I looked at it like mathematic, mathematical problem. Mm -hmm. Every time I used to do those mass gorilla events where I was in Hollywood, I would be out here for one to two days. Mm -hmm. I would make so many fucking connects did that that <laughs> one event. Yeah. And I was even out here. I would just yeah. hit up this homie house, hit up this homie. I'm going to after party, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Go to Jimbo's and then we'll come out here. Every time I used to go with y'all and Dre B when I was younger, yeah. I would just watch y'all work rooms and then end up knowing everyone in the whole room. Yeah. And end up yeah. them niggas coming to the murder to meet with us and shit. <laughs> yeah. I was some other shit. I seen it like 10 times. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I seen yeah. them do it. I know I can talk. Yeah. If you just put me in the room, I'm actually a good DJ. Like I'm pretty yeah, much confident man. in that. Yeah, it's easy. So as long as I come through with the product, yeah. it's almost like some drug shit. Like if I'm yeah. the dealer, yeah. if I got the product, they here yeah. and they're not running out of money. The question yeah. is not if, it's when. Thank yeah. you. At that yeah. point. But that's yeah. dark too. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a lot of where you're saying like, the time, don't knowing when to pull back, knowing when to go. Yeah. Just like in Vegas, like there's so many gamblers that go out there knowing they're gonna win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I like too. You're saying about Reeves' patience. I've seen him play blackjack. That's how he plays. Oh, oh yeah, he's that makes real sense. reserved. Oh, yeah. I'm not playing <laughs> blackjack like, with he's you. He's a I real in hell. <laughs> no way in hell. I'm not losing my money that night. Hate <laughs> white. I'm the worst gambler. I lose and then my whole mood's <laughs> fucked up the rest of the night. Yeah. I'm trying I'm to an asshole I'm, to everybody. I'm trying to reel myself in because I'm, I'm I, I can I can. Get in my, if you want to talk about uh, signs, my Aquarius yeah. bag and get high, highly mm -hmm. emotional about this concept and this idea. Yes. Especially yeah. if it's creative, I'm like, this is it. I have to be able to reel myself back in, like, you're doing that shit again. Yeah, yeah. straight you're up. Doing it again. You like got the same Aquarius bag, my nigga. I got the same yeah, one. Both Aquarius, <laughs> that makes sense. When's your birthday? The 23rd of January. Yeah. Da oh, so you're on the cusp. You're like mm -hmm. right there. You're damn there because I'm Capricorn too. Okay. See, so it's that whole, wow, <laughs> this is rare. Yeah. yeah. Niggas going to go crazy. Come on. Oh, my yeah. God. It's the third <laughs> coordinates of everyone connected. <laughs> the third <laughs> coordinates. <laughs> Sorry, I should have mocked I love astrology people. Y'all yeah. live. But anyway. Oh, my God. No, nah, I'm just, I, I had to figure it out after coming to L.A. though. L.A. was just like a, I can't be called Big Cali and not make it in California. Mm -hmm. I don't care where I go. Mm -hmm. I know I can go to Atlanta and God's gonna bless me. Thank I know you, if I go to Miami. You are a perpetrator if your name is Big Cali and, and you're you not don't on in shut Cali. down California. I, 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 I think there's something too that when you kind of like put yourself, you put your put you put your back in a corner mm -hmm. to determine your destiny. Yeah. yeah. The homie daylight. I remember I used to work at Quiznos. I used to be the manager. He used to be Shout somebody. Quiznos. He used yeah. to work at Quiznos in Carson, California. He was working in there and he told me like I'm 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 gonna do this battle rap thing. I'm, yeah. He was he was he was uh battling at the at the uh the pit and like I, he invited me. I never really went out, but like he told me. Then the man got a face tat and said, "I have no choice." Yeah, straight up. <laughs> you named yourself Big Cali. You yeah, have yeah, no you choice. have no choice. I I think there's a certain level of um of success that you are guaranteed mm -hmm. once you not only commit to that on that level where people see you and they see that, yeah. Yeah. but also on your when you mentally attach yourself to it, it's like, I call myself Curtis King because when I went to Curtis Middle School in Carson, mm. I had supreme insecurities. I did never want to be, I was the quiet kid. And people would be like surprised to hear about that because I talk too damn much now, but I was the <laughs> quiet kid, right? I wasn't debating. I would have never called that. I, I was so call it fucking quiet. quiet. <laughs> I was like, I was like, the, the kid that would, instead of talking to the girl, I'd write poems about what I would say to her if I did. And it's like, that that's was That's like he swagged out. Uh, okay, you were right, just... Right, right. But like, never send it to her or whatever. But like... Oh, see. see, that's, I, right. see that, that's, that's where part. it was a swag out. It wasn't. Was it wasn't. I gotta be honest with you. Like, you you made it look a lot cooler than what that shit was. That shit wasn't that damn cool. I don't know why. <laughs> I saw you like, here you go, just drop no, that off no, and walk it away. No, <laughs> wasn't nothing suave or zero about shit I was doing. It was just like, I'm too damn scared to say something to you, so I'm gonna write this shit down and like yeah. express it in this way. But I say that to say that when I conquered those insecurities, <laughs> that's how I became Curtis King. Curtis yeah. Middle School is when I had the worst of those insecurities. And so now it's like, of course I'm an extrovert. Of course that I found a way to express myself in, in, in all these different mediums because I told myself, you can't be Curtis King and not be able to conquer the insecurities you had at Curtis. Yeah. No way in hell. Now look, I'm gonna be, yeah. to, to just piggyback on that even, yeah. it's crazy too. When I was with Cassius, right before I went to Clark, <laughs> when I went to college, mm -hmm. right before I went to Carlos, we were driving down in the murder, driving down um, Indian on the way, you know, down, mm -hmm. down to his crib. And I remember he was like, nigga, you should go, you should be called Big California. 
Mm-hmm. This is from oh, wow. Cassius. Wow. Cassius said it. He was like, yeah, you should be called Big California. I hate him giving him this much credit. I'm glad he's not here. <laughs> he's he like, yeah, nigga. He'll add like 30 more ass, days. Right? So look, I was smoking three cigs at the same time and I was telling these niggas this straight up. <laughs> nah, I'm messing with you. That's my brother. But nah, he literally was like, yo, you should be called Big California. You know, you, you, know, you go to Atlanta, basically, like, yeah. you know, and break, fall into that, be that nigga, yeah. basically. Yeah. And he always, like, a lot of my friends always have weird ways of giving me little tidbits yeah. without giving me, he was like, you should be called Big California. Basically, like, nigga, if you're going to go out there mm-hmm. and you're really going to go to a new place, really, like, Do that shit. be that yeah. nigga yeah. out there. Yeah. And then I started working at the radio station out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I was sneaking and geeking, slicking and sliding, doing a bunch of yeah. shit that shouldn't have been. Man. <laughs> nah, I mean, it's doing it's a bunch of, of shit. It's part of the story. It was, but like you said, the duality, yeah. right? Yeah. The, the dark with the light. You needed that. Because in the yeah. end, I was at the lowest of my life. But then when Wiz was in town, I was the one letting him in the radio station. Yeah. I and thought this whole time Big C was doing this through school. Mm-hmm. Like the radio station shit. He's doing it like on some side shit. Oh, wasn't side wasn't shit. going to school no more. I got the radio <laughs> shit. I, got the, I was working at the radio station I was like, outside what? of Clark. Yeah, I, I dropped out. I was going to Clark and then yeah. I met the plug and then the plug was like, yeah, come through. And then you said, I got it all figured out. And Fuck then it. I had it figured I'm out. out of school so I was cool to school. <laughs> and that's, but that, but that's then that's crazy. what and the Bro. timing I'm, yeah. that's been my life yeah. and I'm at the point now at 33 and it's crazy this is uh, that's just how I'm feeling right now. I'm just yeah. this, you my no, brother you, 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 no, and, I, and we always end up having a, we had it last we do every time we, every we time. always have this couple but I think that once you even if you don't ever recognize that that's what it is it goes back to that quote life is happening for you and not to you mm-hmm. the moment you recognize that all shit fucked up shit good shit all plays a part into ultimately shaping you into making decisions yep. or putting you in places where you're like, ah, I don't want to move here. I don't want to go here. So I'm, I'm comfortable with this. I, I know home. I know what this is. All of this shit moves you ultimately into where you said you wanted to be fucking great. You said you wanted to be great. Yeah. Don't yeah. tell Don't tell God that. Don't tell whatever you believe Ooh. in the universe. Yeah. Don't say that if you're not going to live that because Fair. you're going to be tested to you a team. You're going to be tested until mm-hmm. you... Hey. Until you get cropped out and become what you say you want to become. And it's like, growth is not supposed to be comfortable or it's not growth. Nothing grows in comfortable situations. T.D. Jakes had a message like yeah. that. It's crazy what he's talking about. is power in the breaking. <clears throat> power in the breaking. Why do you think it hurts when you lift weights and you get muscles? Because it has to break your muscles down to build stronger. Yeah. So that's... Wow, it's crazy we're talking about this. It's like, that yeah, is yeah. literally the only thing that keeps me going. Yeah. But Real you need, shit. You need. You know. I you know, know what I'm figuring it's out. It's going to work. It's like, going I don't to know work. How, you know, it's going to work. When, but you, where? You I, know what? Sometimes you will not see how abundant and how good you got that shit until it gets bad and you realize the grade of bad that you have in comparison to somebody else's shit. Ooh, like you know a, what I'm like, saying? Like a, a child in Africa that has nothing. Yeah. What, not, your degree. Not your even, degree. Or just a nigga. And that's, I, I, I was gonna say Sorry. even because we we all usually go that extreme, right? I yeah. go that extreme, but I'm like, nigga, it may be your neighbor. Straight up. Your neighbor probably like, Straight you probably up. look at him like they got the best marriage in the world. He probably hates his wife. Yeah. His wife probably hates him and lets yep. him know about it. Every and he day. Is at his breaking point every day. And the only thing, as ridiculous as it sounds, the only thing that keeps him going is you saying hello in the morning that two seconds and yeah. smiling. Yeah. And it's like those little, little things, you realize that everything is a domino effect. There was an episode of Breaking Bad where uh, you know, he talks to the pilot. He talks to he talks to this pilot who in turn crashes, who in turn causes the suicide of his daughter. And, or, you know, it's like, it's this domino effect. I might've had it out of order, but that's what I'm saying is that everything that we do does matter Mm -hmm. and everything is happening for our benefit. When you believe that and you jump into that, it's not this, it's not even like, you don't have to make it a spiritual thing. It's just a matter of recognizing that everything fucking counts. For every action, there's an equal or greater reaction. Come on. That Truth. is when that's Sir Isaac Newton. So was that 1800s? That's how look, deep they, the game they is. They These knew. niggas were just spitting bars. But no, none of our teachers made it look sound cool. No, they didn't. It was the, and the ones that did, <laughs> yeah. we yeah. remember forever. For sure. Because yeah. I remember my teacher just, I was like, that's the most easiest thing. That's some player shit for every yeah. action. So if I say something to you, you could slap me. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense because for every action, there is yeah. a That might have been a reaction that you needed. Reaction. You was I, didn't, I didn't get the best game from a teacher professor till I got to uh shout out to I went to Orange Coast College for a few years and I went there for OCC? A music OCC I went there for a music music focus couldn't get any music classes so I ended up taking 
uh, their marketing, getting a marketing certificate. Of course you took right? the marketing but certificate. I, wasn't, I didn't know I, I had a passion. Yeah. God is it. funny. Yeah. That is you know what I'm saying? That's, I didn't know. Have you ever put that together? Like, literally, that's crazy. Oh, no, God, it's, it's happening for you, not to you. I'm telling you. That's why I believe in that because it's like moms came that's to me wild. one day and was like, it's crazy because my pops is like very, he's very into the collegiate world. He got his doctorate. He's, that's his world. Mm-hmm. I didn't get into that world. I, I chose to become a creative and artist in, in, in what I'm doing. And so he wasn't always on the same page as that. Moms was like, <coughs> had a different delivery. Instead of her coming at me in an angry way, she was like, I saw this article in a newspaper. Mm-hmm. And I think it could help what you're currently working on. I was like, mama, nobody ever, like, you sound like you genuinely want to help what I got going on yeah. and you believe in what it is. Right. She showed me that. That got me in school the next month. Instead of yelling or whatever the case may be, the alternative, that got me in school, but even then I couldn't get into classes. So what did I do? I said, well, I heard you got to market yourself. I ended up finding I had a whole nother passion for marketing by, shout out, I talk about in the book, this, this professor named Dennis Morgan, he broke this shit down. He was like, stop listening to these pale descriptions of what marketing is. Marketing is, how do I make my message the most clear to the people that need to hear it the most? Mm-hmm. That's all this shit is. So that's how I can talk to the masses is by making my message clear as possible to the people that need to hear it. Yeah, That shit changed and flipped my brain to the point where now it's like, when y'all see like different things and I'm like, you'll be like, man, Curtis is in his bag. It's like, this is, this is a place that I find happiness in and I'm recognizing like in the big picture of things, all of this shit is happening for my benefit. All of this shit, I had to go through that in mm-hmm. order to understand where I'm at with it right now because had I not did that, I would have never known I had a passion for for um, typography psychology, color psychology. Mm. I didn't know what the hell that was. Mm. And I recognized the shit that I enjoyed the most, the things that make me the most hungry, the most delicious, mm. it has all been pro- pre-programmed for me. Yeah. That's a that's a very important part of art and just all that stuff that people don't they just overlook it. Yeah. It's just it's yeah. just like it's just like in the background for them. And they don't even <laughs> understand how important it is or how how the marketing side or like the impact that that is. Mm-hmm. Magazines, mm-hmm. movies, all that shit. That shit is artist. I know you know how powerful oh, yeah. it is because it's like yeah. you get to talk to a way to you get to talk to people in a way that they don't even understand why they're so connected. Mm-hmm. But you having that knowingness and unknowingness because you, sometimes we don't. Of course, we don't know where it comes from sometimes. But having that balance of like, I know this color will make you feel a certain type of way. It allows you to be strategic and creative at the same time and find a harmony between the both of them. And I think that mm-hmm. that creates sometimes the best business teams. Sometimes that creates the best uh, uh, labels, the best artist teams, like the best production duos. Yeah. You got to have somebody that's thinking with one side of the brain, right. the other one that's thinking the other side of the brain. Yeah. That's why the Neptunes Peanut butter win. and jelly. Come on, yeah. man. I people, I was like, I, <laughs> I, was, literally, literally, I was literally like, like that's why the you. Neptunes yeah. win. I promise across you. The board. Yeah. Niggas always talk about Pharrell, but that nigga Chad. Yeah. There is no, there is no Pharrell that we know of without the simplicity of stripping down. Like, mm-hmm. my favorite beat, I don't care nobody got to say, I know they made some amazing, beautiful chords and beautiful music. It's still that damn clips beat. Boom. Boom, boom, Cause like what it meant, what it meant at that it time, was so it was like- tight. That was like one of the coolest beats I heard. you know, like, you know. Like, hey, niggas wasn't like, outside. From get her to get her to the back yard to yard. Like, <laughs> like I remember hearing that. A little six, and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. You could walk in the middle. Pharrell Fer- had the BBC jacket with Come the lowrider bike. Like, I remember <laughs> seeing all that. I was like, he's the Bro, coolest nigga ever. Yeah. The, 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 the power in that music, the power in that beat is, I remember watching the, the, the uh, I think it was Searching, forget the name of it, Searching Something documentary, and they talked about how Pharrell had all this musical elements going on in the clips beat, and then Chad Hugo came in and said, strip it down. Mm. And it became the beat that we know. Wait, so that was Chad that made that? It was call? Chad that stripped that down. Damn. That's the beat we know. The beat, the same beat that when I was in high school, it didn't matter where you were at, if somebody did, boom. Yeah, it's boom. a freestyle. Doom, yeah. doom, it's a freestyle. No matter Quick. where, it's a cypher, no matter Quick. what's going on. Quick. Niggas on their lunch, lunch table is going in with that beat. Going hard. It's the only beat that matters. Yeah. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? Real. Like that's that's impactful, but I don't think that comes from a place of of you know it all or you know uh, this this is my music theory. That mm-hmm. comes from a place of allowing Pharrell, allowing Chad Hugo to do what he's great at. Chad Hugo heard that and said, I don't even think we need all that. I think that's it. Yeah. And it yeah. was. And it based was. off of the bars that they was coming with, it's like two opposite sides of the spectrum. It, it's, oh, it meshed man. up perfectly. It did. The way them niggas was rapping together with that stripped down <laughs> beat was perfect. 
that song is still slap. When I I'm hear quiet it, right now, thinking slap. about how perfect that song Bro, is. Oh, like yeah. niggas don't talk about the grinding song. Yeah. And it was all trap. It was all trap shit. Yeah. And then, then don't forget about the uh the reggae remix. Oh yeah. Oh, oh damn. damn. I ain't heard that shit in a oh, minute. <laughs> Shout out to nigga Gabriel. He used to drop that at Mo Fires. Yeah. Like everybody got it. didn't matter what she was saying. You got Curtis, it. Did you go to Mo Fires? I did. Uh, two or three times. I didn't. Were you? Enough. Did you ever club in IE like on some other I shit? I didn't. You know what? I I I was I was I was so much of a damn square. Like I was so focused on just singular music, music, music. Right. Singular on how can I'm I get to say you wanted the clubs. I could see you. I feel like I was like, why are we? I don't ever have any club uh, stories. Nah, like I have no know, like stories of you know, the day parties. None mm -hmm. of those shits. Well, that's probably because there's a few sh few shows I went to. I didn't got shot at over that. That makes sense. <laughs> at, uh, now that makes that, sense. Now that makes sense. <laughs> 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 shout out, shout out to uh, to Cela V. I, I remember I met her at one time at, at, at one of them clubs. Yep. And we both. Yep. I never forget. I was the first time I like I had lived in Carson. I didn't live in Long Beach. I didn't live in Compton. <laughs> Ain't never had a bullet whiz by my head until I came to that venue. And I was like, you know what? God, what you telling me? Yeah. Right. Because that could have very well been on my head. But why is it zipping past me? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I once again, like, I it's something that's something now I look at and like now as a dad, and I'm like, damn, I wonder what it would have been like to be out there more. But um, it wasn't for you. Once again, everything happens for, for you, reason. not to you. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't. It was. We had to do it for you, so yeah. you can play the slap, and I can tell you, oh yeah, this but, is for the club, y'all. <laughs> because the new album yeah. to bring it back, yeah, yeah, is for and you got slaps. For the club. I don't even be in there. Ready. I don't even know. You got some know. shit. You got some <laughs> shit I can play right now. I was telling you, I was like, oh yeah, he played me. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm just gonna throw it out in the universe. Since we're talking about prosperous and yes, yes, you know, yeah. he has the song, it's a song and album, I'm not gonna say which one. Yeah. But I wanna do the remix on it. I already oh, heard it. Man. We gotta do it. Come on. Me and Curtis haven't been in the studio together and done anything in like since I didn't lost at least 200 pounds. Since, How about yeah, that? that? It's pack. been at least six, seven years. Bro, that was one of the funnest sessions. You came through, I lived in Rialto. You came through <laughs> here and you asked one question and that shit set off the rest of it. You said, can I smoke? <laughs> and I said, can I open up the window? He was like, yeah. <laughs> and my, I remember I had a, you know, I had a, had a pit bull at that time. And he was looking yeah. through the window Chilling. and you were just going off like that was part of a drum pack that I did called Big Drums Knock Volume Two, yeah. and I remember you set that off to where it was like, like I think it's moments like that that made me understand like the abundance of the kind of life that we live. Like, yeah. I could have called you when you pulled up and was like, "Yeah, I got you," and I'm like, "Bro, those are boxes that are gonna be used all across the world." And we did that slap with mm -hmm. Cashers too that never came out too. We still got Damn. that in there where yeah, you uh, did that. Where you? How about this? You ready to really get you fucked uh -oh. up? You remember, you know, Abbott Elementary, right? Yeah. Quinta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you sampled her for the song with Cash. It was like, ooh, she got money. She got money. You oh, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Quinta when she was on TikTok. I yeah. mean, not TikTok. Uh, it was Vine at the Vine, time. Vine, yeah, yeah. So we sampled her and uh -huh. we used that for the beginning. Of her, but we, but she wasn't even wow. on like that. Oh. In the beginning of that Cash song, I still got it. Very but, rare. But, awesome, weird don't, DJ. But, but don't that come back to what you were talking about earlier about like how these circles are so like interjoined? You're talking about the, the folks working at at uh, you said Sears or J.C. Penney's together. There was Sears, Sears, the call center, the highest. Like, I, I think that once you get in the environment, that's why I like I, I love telling out outsiders the stories of the IE and how I came in as I, I came from L.A. Carson when I first came in 2009. Oh, I didn't know that. I was I, I wasn't living in, I hadn't even known oh, so about you the didn't grow up in the high no, so I you grew up, up in Carson I grew up in Carson California went to high school in Downey um and even went to college like I said OCC and all these other things I went to Cerritos College so what led you to the IE <laughs> Moms. Moms was like, she wanted a fresh start. It was almost some Fresh Prince of Bel-Air shit. Mm -hmm. She was like, Rancho Cucamonga. I, she ain't never going to admit it, but I feel like next, <laughs> next, next Friday, Friday, next Friday, yeah, did it. I feel like next Friday was like, she looked at that like, <laughs> yeah, I know that he having, they having them issues right there, but I think we want to move out there. And dead ass, we moved out. That was her, one of her favorite movies. I think it was, low-key. <laughs> that uh, all makes sense. That was the reason. But we together. moved out there, and I'm telling you, like, I was so against it, because I was like, yo, who do I know out here? Mm. Um, but at the time, I happened to be dating someone who was from out there. Right. Shout out to Judah One because uh, Lion Like Judah, Mind State. Judah, Judah, Judah was yeah. the reason why I was like, maybe this might be okay. Well, through Judah, I was able to book my first album release party in 2009 for a project. I didn't know nobody out here except for on MySpace. Didn't know nobody, even Noah. 
I sent him a message about being in a beat battle, and like we didn't know each other or whatnot. So wait, Judah, two thousand not to cut you off. Yeah. Wait, hold on, sorry. That's like right when the blacks or, remember that because I have like, something. To, this is weird to me. Two thousand nine is when I went to Clark. Damn. So I came back crazy. in 2011. Yeah. And that's when we were doing the Taylor Gang, all mm -hmm, that shit. Because mm -hmm. 2009 is when we did the first Wiz show, right? To the first day, 2010. Yeah. Can that's I tell y'all how nuts that was? What y'all brought out here, the excitement, the energy, like that deserves a documentary in itself. <laughs> in that, like, there's footage. I, I, I know. <laughs> there's footage I know out there. there is. For I know sure. there is because I remember Someone that got some footage. vividly, like, and y'all handled it with such a cool, there was no arrogance about it. Like there were some people who, who you meet all kinds of characters and no matter where, what part of the industry you go to. But I remember seeing a lot of folks who were like, we doing this, we doing that. I've never saw y'all poke y'all chest out. You never had mm. to. And I loved that. I was like, if I ever was in a position to be able to Rain do these things, I want to be like that. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm dead ass though. Like I'm not even but like putting real, extra but on it's real but it's nigga like, shit though. No. I seen that but shit I and I was like, that's, shit, that's how you handle to me, right. that feels more powerful than saying, I'm that, I'm this. It's yeah. like y'all came in the room and that shit changed the temperature of the room. Facts. That's what it was. And y'all didn't ask for nothing. So mm -hmm. when those moments happen like that, I remember me and Noah talking about it. Like, that's the kind of shit that makes us have to level up our dreaming, mm -hmm. level up how we set the bar. Like, what's next? If yeah. this is the, the norm for them, yeah. what can be the norm for us? And are we playing too small? Yeah. So right it, as much as you give us the respect, I'm telling you, it's it's... It's an equal exchange. Mm -hmm. That's dope, man. Yeah. Oh my God, man. Well, yo, real talk is funny. We we really I love the way the, the flow of the show is because we usually be like, oh, what you doing? What you doing? <laughs> but you know, we're gonna go right into it. I just wanna know, Reem, how you been doing these past couple of days, man? I've been good. Man, I went to the uh fucking nat. Hey man, it's that LA shit, bro. You gotta accept that, okay? It's summertime. You can't put us out there like that, bro. You can act like it was something. Hey man, that nigga was pressing me for like 10 minutes. I was like, hey, I kept blowing at him, like, come on, man. He get had away, his get chance. Away. He had his chance. Yeah, he had back. His chance. He you gotta get pressed now, bro. That's funny. I went to the, um, my, my niece and my sister came out here for my niece's birthday. From hey, so how does she know? Uh, 16. What? Yeah, that shit oh. crazy, right? High school? Yeah, nigga. Yeah, that's high school, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sound like a real nigga right now. She <laughs> said, yeah. Like, nigga, wait, what? Like, <laughs> no, but I remember when she was like a little, little girl. Was, like, when, yeah. when I started UTB, me and Dre, like, she was like, but nigga, baby, running around. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, little one-year-old How baby. does that make you feel, though? It's crazy. It's crazy seeing, like, she's almost damn near taller than me. This shit, like, this shit deep now. Like, damn. What's her <laughs> swag? Is her swag still like she was when she was younger? Like, yeah, she's like, I would, I would say she more, she little like me. She like a little, like, she's a, she's an artist. She's a photographer. That's dope. So she's like a little it. like me. That's you know? what I was really going to I was like, I wanted she to do it. Like, yeah. I knew it was one of them, man. Bro, yeah. it's so crazy to see kids that you saw as kids. How old your... Yeah. My son is four. My son is four. <sighs> but it's like, man. thank you, bro. That's but it's it's crazy to see kids that almost are like a physical embodiment of how long you've been doing this. Yeah. That's exactly what Damn, she is. Damn, I never thought of it. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. that's what trips me. That's why I said how you feel. Because yeah. I'm like, I see certain kids and I'm like, they'll tell me, bro, the first time I met you, like, I was skateboarding in middle school. Yeah. And it's a grown ass man I'm looking Not at. Now this nigga's a club promoter and owns. Yeah. Oh shit, it does bottle service. Yeah. Bro, yeah, I mean, if I want a drink, you're yeah. gonna buy me a drink. And I'm like, yeah, you... how long have I been doing this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Has it been that long? That is it probably the ultimate compliment, though, especially <laughs> yeah. out here, because niggas don't, do that. niggas ain't still outside, bro. Why do you think that is? Because, man, they, they, they got sold on a dream. They didn't get sold on the, what their, their purpose was. Because there was a time period, I remember coming out to L.A., like, being from, the, like, even though I grew up in L.A., yeah. they didn't receive me as a as an L.A. native. They received me as an I.E. native. Well, here's yeah. where the difference between then and now. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's a transplant out here now. But that's what I'm saying. That's so, why, that's why like, when I see so, what y'all doing so out here. Different. When I see this shit like this, yeah. I'm like, it's, it, it came to fruition. But yeah. here's what you do. How shout out my nigga uh Big U shout yeah. out oh what nigga whack because yeah, yeah. they always say this is you gotta check in sure yeah. sure you gotta have your people of in course. LA of and you gotta get back to the community you gotta have of people course. who actually is doing it course, if I'm just yeah. the vessel to create opportunities so everyone can win yeah of course I have great LA artists I work with I have great mm -hmm. teams I work with and that's how it can actually work but some people are sold on the idea and not like what it takes to get the idea. I've seen people mm -hmm. come out here and they lose it. And they Sorry not to cut you. No, no, it's real. It's real. Like they, they get, get swallowed, swallowed up. up by it. To come out here and say, 
I'm going to not only duplicate what I've done, but I'm not coming out here to take over. I'm coming in here to establish footing and uh, continue a tradition that I know, a formula that I know that has worked. To do it here in the way that you're doing it and to have all these things working, it's like, this is the evolution of it. There's been a lot of Appreciate folks, man, that, that have man. left, like, they left the city, they came out here, and they they lose a lot of themselves because it's like, as much as, you know, some folks may dog the IE and dog the limitations of not having the, the Hollywood lifestyle, it's like, but that to me, when I came as an outsider, that to me was like, I have never seen this shit yeah. to where I'm looking at this clothing brand, this clothing brand. I'm looking at this type of artist. Wow. I'm like, it's yeah. everything here. Yeah. 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 And, is that and, how you felt when you first came out here, Reem? Like back in the day with you and Dre? Because yeah. y'all was coming out here in the beginning where Fairfax was literally getting built up. Yeah, like, that niggas shit was, was, it was crazy because we just turned 21 and it's like, you know, just seeing like niggas like at, all at one party, like, right. yeah. Dom Kennedy, Currency, <laughs> Tyga. Niggas would just literally just be pulling up the parties like at boutique. <laughs> and niggas would be drinking. Yeah, everybody's just chilling. But now the internet is so like hypersensitive and hyper focused, mm -hmm. like niggas would never do that. Yeah. But seeing being a fresh 21 and pulling up and seeing all that, like the way LA started, mm -hmm. it was like we were those like I niggas. Like, where y'all niggas from? Marina? Oh, Marina Valley. Oh, okay, yeah. what's up? Yeah, how y'all yeah, find yeah, out about yeah, this? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it was like very like tight knit, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like even finding out about how to get the stuff. Yeah. You know, and, like, it, it was different back then. And to be I, even true, that's how I think I even got blessed in it. Because y'all yeah. came out here and did that kind of stuff. Yeah. And not even kind of stuff. Y'all did that shit and mm -hmm. created that foundation. Yeah. So when I come out here, niggas be like, oh, you from... I be like, oh, yeah, I'm from Marina Valley. I'm like, oh, like, Riverside? Like, Ontario? Mm -hmm. They be like, oh, yeah, I know. And they name like, three artists can that I, they came out can here I, and get some yeah. shit. Can I add something to that, though? Because I think that that it's it's a... Even though we didn't operate from a team standpoint, it was like, this is home team. We got our cities that we're from. Y'all was repping down Moval and mm -hmm. came out here. I think it needed to happen in that way because we had a style of coming out to LA that was like brute force. You're going to respect my talent. Yeah. If I'm beat battling, I'm going to come and I'm taking off heads. I don't care that that's BBI. <laughs> I love it. I don't <laughs> care. This is the, You're going to understand that shit is different out here. Yeah. And we really repped that. Shout out to Captain. And like, we really repped that. But that was one way to do it. Mm -hmm. Y'all did it in a way that was like, you made a lot of folks out here want to be like, what's, what's what y'all on? I look at yeah. Cassius, I look at like, I, I remember seeing him in like, you know, Hollywood parties and, and, and like, even like uh, the, the the Genius House. Like when they Yo, I remember the, we seen you at the bro, Genius and House. I remember you, you like were there the too. eyes yeah. turn when y'all came in and it was like, was it was like y'all embodied a level of wow. cool that LA couldn't out, like a lot of folks in LA couldn't out cool. With us, they, we, we weren't the cool guys. We were like the, Oh, them, them, them rapping ass niggas from my E. <laughs> Y'all were like, I want them clothes. And mm. damn, they always got baddies around them. Like, they always got some. They all, like, damn, I'm not. <laughs> and in LA, like, from, from somebody that, that still Curtis, considers this themselves. Curtis, this means a lot coming from you. I'm like, I'm yeah. Not being real. And I had to make sure I said that it because that's it's how much it means for me to be on here. But it's like, a lot of, like, it, me being from LA, I know what it takes. Like, for, 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 for dudes my age, niggas would be like, this nigga got all, like, you can say whatever you want about him, but shit, he got shit. He got baddies. Like, he got, he always got that. That in combination of the way you carry yourself, mm -hmm. you never were happy to be in a room. Yeah. You never mm -hmm. acted straight like up. you didn't belong in a room. Yeah, straight up. And that's some shit that I'm telling you, like, it took me years to finally get to a place where I'm like, not only am I not, I'm not here just be over happy to be in a room. I feel that I've put the work in and I belong here. And even if somebody tells me I don't belong here, it doesn't matter. I've already made a commitment before I came here that wherever I go, I'm supposed to be. Jay Business, shout out to Jay Business. He said something that was a really shit it. one That's time. He game. said, he said, you know why I never get starstruck? He's like, cause I'll be in the back room like at a show and be like, fuck what you talking about? Nigga, we in the same place right now. What does that mean? Mm. Right. Like sure we're yeah. here right now in the same place. Yeah. yeah. Like. All that shit you worked out, all that shit you worked towards, I respect it. I respect your grind. But at this current moment, we're right here in the same place. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that we've accomplished the same things, but at this point, we've met at this point. So that means something about me, mm -hmm. and that says something about you as well. We're all peers. Mm -hmm. We're all coworkers. But mm -hmm. a lot of folks don't act like that. I didn't have nah, people. I came don't. out to L.A., yeah. bro, like reputable names call me Cassius. <laughs> Oh, straight dude. up. They called oh. me. Met me two times, three times. And I'm like, the nigga Cash is right there. <laughs> <laughs> he's right there. That's my brother. Like, he's right there. Like, how you going? Uh, oh, you oh, Cash? Oh, you Curtis King. Oh, okay. And I'm like, we're not doing this. But I feel like it had to evolve the way that it evolved. And like, this is not a shot to anybody. And I, you know, I got love for so many of my brothers out here. 
that I still yeah. do business with and I still call my brothers, but it's like, I learned something about myself when I moved out to the IE and got to see myself from a different lens. When I came back out, mm -hmm. I was like, damn, I was like this, because mm -hmm. this is all I knew. But going out there and really experiencing culture, the culture that was like that, that is the IE and seeing all these brands that have gone to do all these crazy things, mm -hmm. seeing that for me was so huge because I'm like, that shit really became fabrics of, of, the, the, of who I am now. Like you might see a patch here, a patch here. Like I'll start, I'll, I'll approach a record and I'm like, this is like some UTB energy. Like I, I just feel it on this or like I'll show you some of the songs. And I'm yeah. like, I immediately think nah, about Nah, he told me when we were listening to it, he was like, yeah, track three. I was like, three sure. skincares. I was like, yeah. Skincares yeah. and show the slap. one, you're going to get that's slap. That's slap. Slap. I imagine that like, that's something I still imagine is like. And that shit with you and Noah. That's... Yeah, yeah, but that's, I'll, yeah. Can yeah. we talk about that for a second? We can talk about all that. Before, because yeah. I know, I don't, I'm like, the album, look, bro. Look, let me say this. There ain't no damn secrets. Whatever you want to talk about, I'm not doing that, that, that teasing game about that. All I'm asking for folks to do is pre-order that shit when you see that shit on iTunes, because if we can get this one up, we got the last two EPs up to number three on the iTunes hip hop charts. Talk we, your shit. We passed up Drake and Kendrick and all these other folks that I'm fans of, but it's like, nigga, we did this in FL Studio from our homes. Mm -hmm. DIY swag. DIY, DIY for DIY. real, for yeah. real. Like, and you can check all of my stats and all that shit. That shit lines up. We did that. Me and oh gosh, shout out to my brother, oh gosh. He mixed that all out in FL, and it's like all the things that we've been told. Niggas can't get that shit off of the FL studio. You ain't gonna be able to do that without a major feature. You can't do that without radio play. You can't do this. They with... still be saying that even after yeah. everything Ninth Wonders that's done. Gonna, that's gonna go like, on I'm forever. Sorry. It's going forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People are gonna be saying shit like that forever. Tell the end of time, bro. How about the how about the 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 the, the vinyl versus the 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 ah uh, yeah you're it's right. It's not going nowhere. The uh, vinyl vinyl people that straight vinyl or Serato or even people who do controller versus uh, vinyl Serato. <laughs> no it matter gets what. Deep in the, the, no matter what. And I guess what? Can I be real? Yeah. And maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. It really as a DJ, maybe even as a producer, from what I'm noticing, because I'm making these albums mm -hmm. right now, so I've been working with a lot of different producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've noticed. It don't matter what the fuck you use, mm -hmm. as long as you know what the fuck you're doing with what you use. How about that's it. how about this? How about this? Because that's a that's a bar. But how about this? <laughs> who, mm -hmm. who, who are we impressing? Yeah. Who are we impressing? Because I got to a point even with this project where I was like, I'm doing too much producing for other producers who are not gonna listen to this shit. Yeah. They're gonna find that's reasons what to it, not listen Quest to this. Questlove says that all the time. He says that's yeah. why he hates sometimes when he does shows and there's other artists in the crowd. Yeah. Cause then he could tell like the artists will start out singing more. Cause he's starting to sing for like the yeah. artists in the crowd, not for the actual crowd. Like yeah, facts, the crowd don't facts, fucking facts. know that you're using a special hi hat that was from Dilla. They don't know. In 98. You, they don't know. They <laughs> like, don't know. You think you think shit. you think and, and, I, and I always use an example of like just show you how ridiculous it is. You think 17 year from you know what I'm saying from North Dakota who's listening to your song is like like for instance I was I, I this whole project I basically made on, on a live stream or I have video of every single That's second so of the creation sad. of this right so in the process of that I get all these opinions somebody had come in and random guy was like you need to stop cutting off the vocals and the breaths in between because it's taking the life out of the songs and I'm like <laughs> I stopped the stream for a I'm second sorry. and just stood up and I was like played the song with the, in its entirety. And I'm like, you think that lost energy? Because yeah. of the breath? You think somebody 16 listening to this, this shit in Dollar General headphones mm -hmm. is going to stop their music and say, Mom, no more. No more. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do I need the breaths. <laughs> you know what? Because he's using musical loops. And because he is, uh, uh, did he use FL Studio? This shit is out for me. Like, this has never happened. Nah. It's only other producers, other engineers. Like, even like there's a whole conversation about you know, what's real uh, uh, mixing, what's real, like, it's it's blasphemous for me to talk about mixing this project in FL Studio, but it's like, when it gets to the person needs to get to, the consumer, it doesn't fucking matter. It don't matter. When I was the biggest, like, Eminem fan, I remember getting a CD version of a cassette song that he did probably in the early 90s, terrible mm -hmm. quality. It didn't matter because I was an Eminem fan. And mm -hmm. it's still here. And that Straight shit up. was something and for I me. And I love Infinite. Uh -huh. Infinite, still, yeah, that's what Infinite I'm, still bro, hit. I and that's that not probably from, not from Infinite, but Infinite, if you listen to the quality <laughs> of Infinite, as it didn't Dr. Matter. Dre fucking mix and mastering, yeah, yeah. it's a whole different bag. Listen to fucking any trunk music from Memphis. How did yeah. that shit sound? That shit sounded Shout out King wild. King but them shits are slaps. It's wild. You know what I also, also I say with that, bro, is that I think that that's a part of 
the character. And I think sometimes yes. you get with an engineer who knows so damn much they don't know shit anymore mm -hmm. because they mix the character out of a song. They mix the personality yeah, out of it. Yeah. That shit sounds so crazy. Imagine cleaning up Mad Lib's drums. Yeah, hell It nah. will lose everything. Yeah. That's crazy. Imagine telling Kanye on, on Twisted Dark Fantasies, ah, uh, let's clean these drums up and let's like take some of this instrumentation out. Yeah. You're not, that's not Kanye no more. That's yeah. the person that's making a tweak. So I have to take that into consideration. Imagine that. Dilla on a metronome. Come on, my God. <laughs> that hurt. That hurt. Right Imagine there. Dilla on some like quantize <laughs> and shit. Like niggas is getting like, it takes Man. Every, I mean, Wasn't it him that was talking about quantizing and be like, he yeah. doesn't quantize yeah, yeah, and yeah. shit? Yeah, yeah. That's not like he. he it, it's. It, I remember there and was that's a drummer. Why he's so tight. That's why. That, that's what we, we we we. And I think we do the same thing in relationships sometimes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Talk your shit. Where we get in a relationship, know, yep. we get in a relationship with somebody, and we fall in love with the things that they show us at face value, mm. and then we start to focus and narrow our focus on the things we don't like, and we try to shift those as if those things don't have a direct effect on the qualities we do like. Yeah. We start right. shifting. That was worded like perfectly. That was, was worded perfectly. I couldn't say it any better. Right. I, I miss yeah. when you did this. Well, I did that because you allowed me to do this shit. Like you didn't know about this other yeah. shit or whatever. But it's like you can't have it. So now I'm I'm I say this from a perspective of I'm still working on that. But that's important to really. I think that's the theme of this is the duality of just life in general. But recognizing like even when you got this shit figured out, you don't got you don't know shit. That's mm -hmm. the moment when you got to be the most aware, the most careful of looking at your environment and recognizing like. I'm stuck in these ways. There's right. another evolution that has to happen. Yes. Oh, man. That was a lot Look, of game right there. That was a lot of game, bro. That was a lot of motherfucking game. Oh, right niggas there. is taking their pins and pads out yeah, and doing that. you better get them shits out. Look, Reem, let's yeah. just go into best and worst, man. For sure, yeah, let's, let's do Let's do it. So, um, All right. <clears throat> let me give him a proper intro. Best and worst with Dream Hafner. Okay, so Curtis, we do this segment called Best and Worst. Okay. And I give you a topic, and you're going to tell me the best of it okay and the worst of it and today i have i'm glad i have you here because these are four things that i think that we both all used a lot <laughs> i love it I'm okay i win it i love I'll it, win it okay. already let's run it best and worst music downloader <laughs> wow okay bear share wow. uh -huh. napster <laughs> kazaa limewire Napster. I got mine already. Yeah, okay. I, got, I got mine. All right, go ahead. Go, you yeah, can go first. Napster's the best because it was the first. Okay. Wow. Okay, you should. All right, hold first. on. Can, can I? All right, go look, ahead. Do you think? Do you think? Here's uh, where I'm uh, at. Uh -huh. Napster. Yeah. Remember downloading on Napster? You remember how long it took to get one song? You might have to click on 20 different ones. Yeah. And then one with Soldier Boy did that bullshit where he was on every other song. So I'll be so like, genius, Disco bullshit. Inferno, <laughs> Soldier Boy. <laughs> you. I'm like, you. Fuck. I was like, again? <laughs> again? I got it already, bro. Uh, <laughs> Damn, sorry, my bad. Yeah, no, no. That, but I get you. Yeah. It's the first. You're that was right. the first. Even with the bad downloads, it wasn't like we had a barometer to judge it by. You're right. Yeah. You're it right. was like, we were just happy to I get anything. Have, we have you, free music. Wow. You, this is amazing. Do you do y'all remember the first time you sat down at a at a computer and yep. it was like, download whatever song you want. Do you know how confused I was? Yeah, I, I didn't, didn't know get what to it. do. I didn't get it. You know what I did? I, what? I downloaded the eight mile soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Lose yourself to drop. I got I can tell you what I got. I got uh 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 born Jamaican. Send me your love with the yeah. roses. Hey. I was like, that was my shit at that time. So I got that. I respect that. I got a, a few born Jamaicans, and I, I got uh born maybe uh my Maya uh Maya and Benny Siegel. I was really on that on that. The time. Philly girl? Yeah. Can you feel it? Oh, that uh, that's a slap. <laughs> that was yeah. my shit right there. So those were my first two, and I think I went in my shot A bag, and I was like, this is too much power. Mm -hmm. It was too deep. I love where you went. The first three dollars. <laughs> that was great. I was on Eminem only. <laughs> Eminem, and I think I downloaded a ball with the ball. Yeah. Just because I wanted to hear it. Uh, Limp Biscuit? No, uh, Kid Rock. Oh, wow. Kid Rock. My uh, name yeah. is Kid. That was a time period. That was a time That's period. Right. I get it. No, I get it. Yeah, I was I get just it. in that bag. I was yeah. wearing. I was wearing fucking Osiris's. Yeah. I had, I had our Dickies. <laughs> I had our World Industry shirts. See, that, that was before I was bold enough to to tell my tell my my friends, especially my my uh, my black friends, that I was listening to shit like that. I was like. I want to download Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's, but if I, if I take that shit in <laughs> right now, if I, use, if I use my nigga 56K modem to get, to get some, some support his head, they're going to look at me kind of crazy. Like, now I'm around folks who understand yeah, that. No. Yeah. They love it. But I like, at that time, that it was like, it was like, it was like uh, you don't want to, you don't want to, uh, 
pull out that uh, Side note. head only you. Do you fuck with Jamiroquai? That's my, yes. Okay. Yes. When did you just, did, did you know about Jamiroquai back in the day? Or yes. did you discover him? My mom. Shout out my mom. I don't know mom. where that came from, but Man. I just, I discovered question. him three years ago. My eyes And I became up. the biggest fan. When you fan. said that, my eyes lit up because there are so many songs that I feel like, you talk about the soul talk that exists it. in my music. Talk about it. That happened when my mom was like, first off, watch this video. And this is the time when you couldn't like get on the internet or whatever, but she, I think it came on MTV. Virtual she was insanity? like, watch Virtual Insanity. Yeah. Yep. I was the first time I ever fell in, like, I've seen videos and all of that. Floor, it was yeah. I saw that and I was like, this is making me fall in love with the song more. Then I heard the songs and my mom did a thing where she used to make me guess the instruments in a song. Shout mm. out your mom's mom's that. like my mom's wow. played keys. She's played keys for over forty something years. Did you do a song OG. with your mom's? Did he do I did. like? Oh, I, did. I remember like, that. Yeah. I never forget. Like mom's is like really. She she mom. She, I know her as mama. Both mom know her as Roro because she she thorough. Shout she out to her. I, 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 oh, I, I never Roro. forget. I went through her cassette tapes and I seen like all the gospel. She you know she gospel now. From Carson. I come from Carson. From Carson. I seen all the guys. She went to, you know, she went to uh, uh, Carson High. I seen all yep, the stuff. You just have to get the foundation. We right, right. The foundation right. is important. Get it right. It's yeah. important. But like, <laughs> my, moms didn't tell me stories of her playing keys, like playing the piano in the jungles. Like, she, she, oh, moms damn. has these Let's stories. Go. And I'm like, what part of the story is that she won't tell me? So, like, wait, what? I went through the cassettes and I never forget. I saw gospel. I saw gospel. Then I started seeing, like, all right, George Clinton. Then I started seeing, like, Scarface. Yeah. And I yep. pulled, I said, I Mama. What's this? He said, I like the piano on it. I said, ah! no. I said, you didn't gotta do that. But I said that to say, like, like um, when we were talking about Jamira Kwai, she showed me the video and she told me, like, can you guess what instruments are in this? I know you don't know all of them, but can you guess? And I would guess, and she was like, That's good. What you missed out on is the roads. And that's when I started to really, in a certain mm. way, kind of define my producer brain. Wow. Because of Jameer Kwai. And it's so crazy you bring no that name shit, up because really? that's rare. 96? Yeah. That's the point where I started really thinking about the idea of Produce. could I make music? I didn't start mm. making it until 2003, but at 96, when that came out, I was like, damn, I like. That's when I learned. I always say it's the, the holy trinity between Erica Badu, Jill Scott. And Sade, and I'm gonna just add Jameer Kwai to it. That was the first time I experienced music that could literally change the temperature of a room. Facts. No matter how Real cold shit. it is, no matter how hot it is, no matter how Can heat, you can play can list. heat right now yep. and it what? will get lit. So, what? As soon as you hear that, even that for a lifetime. Uh, Dun, 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 dun. Lifetime. Yeah, oh, I'm like, yo. Salula. Like, we can go down Ooh. the list. It's, he, he got yeah. beat cuts that weren't ever big singles. That's the thing about him, man. I feel like yeah. most people don't even know. They know, like, Virtual Insanity, and they might mm -hmm. know one other, but when you really listen to his albums, you're mm -hmm. like, this nigga got slapped. Slap. Yeah. Yeah. And they his always got the big. funkiest basses. The funkiest. I want to know who his bass guitarist is. You got. I forget the dude's name, but you got to see. There's a YouTube channel for his, his, uh, his role player. It's one of the craziest role plays I've ever seen, in period. But he does videos on like the runs that he does, and you start listening back into the project. For me, at least, that's the thing that connected me is that when you listen to a role piano, the the it, it drove neo soul. All my favorite genres mm. were driven by it. Is a certain warmness. The world is there's a certain warmness and a certain like like uh, uh, straight to your heartness of it. And when it's played the right way, mm -hmm. that shit can just key by key raise goosebumps off of your skin. Facts. That's what that Jameer Kwai was for me. And it's crazy because a lot of the aesthetics I pulled for this project um, were from a lot of that. Right. There's a lot of that that aesthetic was like, how do I create that? Like, how do I find Jameer Kwai meets the, the feelings I get from a prince? Not necessarily sonically, but the feelings I get from a prince, the feelings I get from a Sade. Well, I can't take it there. Well, how can I bring that here? Well, what would that look like in 2022? in the form of a Curtis King. You know what it mm -hmm. is, too? I was uh, Just to add to it, then we're going to get your worst, too. Yeah. Um, we, I forgot we playing a no, damn no, game. You're good. you're good, you're good, you're good, you're <laughs> good. Let me shut up. No, no, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> I feel like this album is a good synopsis of your career, meaning mm. I hear your first beats from like even back in the Jubilee days. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To yeah. even working it before then with even you and Noah's shit back Sin in the day. Sinbads and all that yeah, other stuff. All yeah, all that. Yeah. But then it's like, you you did, I don't even say try because that made, that almost demeans it in a way. Mm -hmm. You did every type of style till you found, mm -hmm. like, literally, I could do what I want. I, I'm going to say it for you. I was a tryhard. I was very much. And there's a lot of that energy that exists even still today that I, that 
I had to stop fighting with because mm -hmm. I started to recognize like those character flaws are what makes you a what makes you a millionaire, billionaire. Yeah, straight up. You're you're think about a gentleman who has who cannot stop his argument of ways, but figures out how to filter that into sports. You become a Stephen A. Smith. Talk yeah. about it. Uh -huh. The things that we look at as character flaws, you need to change that in form, and most people do. It's a human thing to do. You're like, damn, people tell me about this. If I want to be successful, I got to change it. What if the person that's a shopaholic turns into, I'm going to do fashion hauls. I'm going to get on YouTube and do vlogs of me shopping. Now they're getting monetized for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the switch for me to so where I recognize like- I love listening to music so much I DJ. Man, th well, that's what I'm saying. I literally like, love mm -hmm. listening to music and I love watching the emotion change in a room, like you said. Man. And it's a sick kind of controlled thing. Yeah. Because I like the fact that I've been in the rooms where it's all turned up and I could play some R&B and all of a sudden the girls start dancing. See, yeah. but And I, then I do little things like that bro. to just switch the whole thing. And in the album, mm -hmm. to bring it back, mm -hmm. then we're going to go mm -hmm. to your words. Mm -hmm. You see the roller coaster, and you see the emotion and that change throughout the whole thing. Th this was me taking the pressure from around my own neck that I had been holding on to for years to where it was like, nigga, you better be successful. We didn't spend all this time doing the shit that we did for you to be just local or for you to just be this and that. And not to say that that's a bad turn, because we talked about that on the last time we yeah, talked, but like, yeah. it got to a point where like, I was putting so much pressure on, this shit has to be my college dropout. This shit gotta be this. Yeah. And it's like, if you have that much pressure around your, the very foundation that creates the music, what makes you think that people won't feel angst or uneasiness when they listen to the music? Yeah. It all matters. Yeah. This is the first project where it's like, this is how I feel. And the way that I express it may not always be how you like it, but the shit is real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I remember Wack was saying, like, the truth can never be disrespect. Mm. And that's something that I, I, I shout I, I out Wack. Wack, Wack, Wack gives you some gems every day. Wack is wild, but he's saying, but, but yeah. that one right he there, he gives you some. That was something that, that I, I love. That, check that in, and I love that one. It stuck with me because it was like the, the truth can never be disrespect, but I think it's not just the truth we give to other people. It's the mm -hmm. shit we say to ourselves because a lot of times, like, it's easier to lie to ourselves because, like, we know we know our own bullshit and we know that we gonna mm -hmm. yeah I'm a, you tell everybody else yeah I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this I'm gonna go to the gym da 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 and you know in your mind you like nigga you finna go home you gonna open up the <laughs> Oreos in that damn cabinet you gonna do what you always do like mm -hmm. so, I love I love yeah. when you could try to do shit I tell that to people I be like hey I tried to lose weight for years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I actually just start doing this shit. I tried to quit cocaine for years. Man. Wasn't working. I tried to fucking Bro, DJ for years. I, I gotta get you this book, uh, Atomic Habits, that I just I'm just starting to finish I need it. it. It's one of the best books on habits because I still got some things, even about my personality. Like I wanna like, I wanna make that shift because I see how it can be beneficial for my son. But one of the things it talks about is instead of trying to do the things, you have to establish first and foremost that you need to talk and become what that is you're trying to be. You don't say, I'm trying to lose weight. You say that I am not someone who does these type of things. Yeah. I'm somebody who goes to the gym, mm. right? There was a dancer he talked about where into her 60s, 70s, she was a professional dancer and she never lost step. And one of her things was she always committed herself to going to the gym. She said, my regimen starts when I wake up and it ends when I take the taxi to go to the gym. Not even the gym is the regimen. Wow. She said the regimen is if I do the things that I do, get up, whatever she did, get her coffee, brush her teeth, eat her food, and then get in a taxi, that leaves her no option but to go do the things she says she's going to do. And I think a lot of times we have, this, bar, we have this all or nothing bar. mentality that's like, shit, if I can't give it my all today, then I'm not going to do it. And it's like, shit compounds. And if you can give it 20% of your energy today because you wasn't really feeling it like tomorrow. I know I'm going to wake up late and not really feel like going to the gym, but I'm going. Even if right. that means I go for five minutes, that's crazy. You don't go for five minutes. Yes, because that shit compounds. And we're not just talking about in losing weight. We're talking about in the mentality that Crazy I'm not the regimen. person that yeah. misses two days in a row to go to the gym. It hasn't always been like that, but having that mm -hmm. conversation, that shit changes you. Man. It changes you. But that book, Atomic Habits, is what showed me that. I need to get that, man. All right. What's, What's your worst? Downloading. Worst. 
Gave us your best. Bear Napster. share. I think a bear, bear share. share. Bear share yeah. caused me so many issues with my pops. <laughs> <laughs> I know you didn't put up a virus on my computer. Bear uh, share. I know you didn't. The PC bear... was infected by bear share. Oh, Bruh, yeah. bear Do you remember share, what like, album it was or song it was that no, probably did it? It wasn't no album. <laughs> hey, okay, we're gonna leave it, it at that. It wasn't no album. Hey, it, I know. Was... We already know what you were on. I might have renamed it an album, but it Chris. wasn't no album. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this this shot ain't greatest hits. Why is it an MP4? Yeah, a little MP4. What the MP4? Oh, no. A little dot move, dot oh, move. Wow. a quick time file. Yeah, well, you going to the quick time? The quick time file. Hey, yeah, shout out the quick time player. Let me throw that in the. I used, bro. I used, man. I'm so embarrassing, but I'll be like, I'll be like, I have my folder that said private, and this shit was so obvious to be private. And then inside the folder, private. Inside the folder, uh, codes. Inside the folder, passwords. And they'd be like that video. It the really one video, six, seven folders. A little damn addict. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to the, and that's what, and you know what? <laughs> but bear share starts, it issues. starts with that. It, it does, with bro. It does. We can, that's a whole different pile. That's we gonna a whole go into conversation, that. but yeah, we yeah, go for into sure. That, bro. For sure. All right, <laughs> my best. What were the options one more time, please? Uh, bear share, Napster, Kazaa, and LimeWire. Okay, my best was LimeWire. Okay, mm. and I'm gonna tell you why. LimeWire was the quickest. It finally was the one that <laughs> actually was got it, it so together. It the quickest. But it, it damaged your PC because it was so quick. Yeah. It did whatever it took to get that next file. That, that P was well, getting to that other two hey, P. Yeah. That shit would trigger, that, that shit would trigger your, your cable company to say, I never get my home. Yeah, no. That's why it got dark. It got dark. <laughs> nigga, I downloaded a rush hour too. They were like, nigga, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got it. It was so clear to me. Like, how did I do nigga it? Nigga went from a song to a whole movie. I was an addict, bro. I needed it. Too yeah. much info. They send you that. They send you that letter that said you want to be next. Yeah. yeah we got no. You. <laughs> okay. Cause look, I never even told this. And I'm a real quick man. Yeah. Look, we. My when I first started in high school, I was making mixed CDs for people, and mm -hmm. then people would give me a list of songs, mm -hmm. and then I would just go on LimeWire and download oh, all the songs man. and make a mix burner yeah, CD, yeah. and I sold that for like twenty five dollars. Yeah. So all I had to do was sell like ten of those, oh, you know, going off. make some money. I had math <laughs> then; I was a hustler. So then, but then that taught me music because I was listening to so much different yeah. music. Yeah. That's how I found out about Three Eleven. I found yeah. out about Revolution. Yeah. I found out about like J Bug and like origin. all those. Hey, like, can I just say that's such a fire origin story? Because yeah. now it's like you. This is what it's, this is what makes me feel like we're constantly being led into becoming what we're supposed to become, mm -hmm. even when it feels like we're off yeah. course. Because look at what your your look at what your 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 uh, origin story yeah. is. It's people feeding you what they want to hear. Exactly. No fucking wonder you're at Coachella playing what they want to hear. hear. Hey, I never put it together yeah. like that, but yeah, that's you're right. Crazy. You're for sure yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, that's how I started. But uh, my worst is going to have to be... Uh-oh. You said Bear Share, Kazaa. Napster. Kazaa was the worst. In LimeWire. Kazaa was, yeah. was crazy. Because I was crazy because it was right when, like, you could download Fruity Loops from Kazaa <laughs> and niggas ran it up. Yeah. And then from that, it just went to darker shit. That's where, like, yeah. the adult industry came into play. Oh, yeah. It start, you start Ooh. getting the you start Superhead videos start yeah, popping yeah. around. Like, I'll yeah, talk about yeah. it. Shout out Pinky. Shout yeah. out Pinky. It was all yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. all those videos. So it got it's crazy. a bunch of names I shouldn't know. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. We, uh -huh. We here. We recover. We here. God is good. God is good. God is good. Yeah, here. We recover. We recover. We <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> All right. He so, know my heart. He know my heart. He know my heart. <laughs> he know my heart. <laughs> he know my heart. <laughs> All right. So, Marie, what's your best and what's your worst, man? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. Because I was my best because we just switched our internet. Mm. So... I remember when I got LimeWire, and it was good for a little bit. <laughs> and then my computer just went bonkers after a little bit. Yep. <laughs> it just went Lime all wire the did way. Yeah. LimeWire Lime did, did whatever dirty, it took, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it would tap Obama's computer for the song. She said, you want <laughs> If Obama <laughs> has Stevie Wonder, <laughs> Pastime Paradise, like, damn. you're getting wow. it. Lime yep. said, LimeWire said, you need that? You need yeah, that? I, I know where it is. I'll be back. Just oh, yeah. don't trip. I can't be responsible. Don't ask me where I got it from. Yeah, it was really like a reliable ass. Cause I had some abstract songs I'd be searching for. I'm like, yeah, oh, shit, did you like get that? it? Yep, bro. I think I had like a rare voodoo backlog song, and I didn't even know I had it. I just thought I was trying to download fucking Devil's Pie, yeah. and I was like, man, this ain't even a song. It's all low, oh, and I hear a bunch of talking in the background. Yeah, yeah. What is this shit? And I like deleted it. 
folks I was, was just saying, they, they want people. Away. They was getting away with murder at that time, bro. But yep. yeah, that's the yeah. dark web of the internet. Was, everybody was leaking what everything. What was the internet yeah. after? Uh, damn, it was dial up, and then it was like an internet. That so came it was, it, it was it Ethernet. Was, cable, was it a cable modem? Yeah, it was cable modem, cable Ethernet. Modem. It was no more phone that you needed. No, it was just no. Ethernet straight wire. And then it was something else that came out after Wi Fi. Yeah. It was before Wi Fi, though. T1? DSL. Oh, DSL. DSL. That's what DSL. the fuck it was. Yeah. DSL. And if, DSL. And if you, had a, you, had, you had like a homie that Verizon had, a had the DSL yeah. lock. They oh, had yeah. the... Remember the T1, T2, T3? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. I was like, you was on elite level. That's, those, are the, those are the servers I was trying to download from. Yeah. Let yeah. me find a person with the T3. I'm like, I'm getting this whole movie tonight. I yeah. remember when I went to Cal State Fullerton, I was talking to some girl out there, uh-huh. and I remember I went and heard the library, and it had Ethernet cord, and it was all the blue cords. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. I downloaded two I'm about hours. to run it up. I downloaded two hours in an hour. <laughs> I went in there so they couldn't stop me. Her shit got flagged. I, look, look, you want to talk about some 50, from 56K modem stories? I waited 45 minutes to watch a 15 second clip of Vince Carter jumping over that. that <laughs> very low quality. Super, yeah, super very low quality, quality. This big. But I seen it. Yeah. It was like a gif. jumped over his head. I went to school the next week, like, oh. It was like man. a gif almost. That's, like. why we had the dope, <laughs> that's why we had the dopest. We had the dopest time growing up because we were we seen every facet of mm-hmm. entertainment from like VCR. Like we all remember VHSs. Yeah. We yeah. all remember Blu-ray. I remember even the big ass disc, the laser disc. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I had a hood ass uncle that had the big screen TV that was a projector with the laser disc. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> now I know what he really did in real life, but my mom did never told me. I just couldn't spend a night ever. Right. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it was lit though. He always bought me whatever I wanted. It was so tight. But anyway, that's a different LA no, that's, story. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a very different. But he had a laser there. disc. He had Sandlot. He always used to play it for me. <laughs> he played me a laser disc and sell out the rookie because that, that he liked time. baseball. Oh, that, was hood nigga. Oh, that was a time. Oh, that was a time. He was a hood nigga that liked baseball only. He didn't even like basketball. He played your rookie of the year? Yes. Yep. Rookie of the year yep. in yeah. Sandlot. That's all. Yeah. With the, yeah. with the, yeah. with the, that with the nigga with the broken arm? Yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm trying to break my arm today. Yes. I was like, mama, come. <laughs> I tried to jump off the bed, hurt myself. I'm going to be real. It didn't work. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's comedy, bro. So Curtis, that's man, before worst. we get up out of yeah. here, bro, did we did you did your best and worst? I'm sorry. At worst is sorry, I didn't do your worst. This is LimeWire it came down the line. LimeWire just Lime fucked, is the worst. It fucked up my computer too much. And we have complete opposites. Cause I hate yeah. Kazai and I love LimeWire. You love Kazai. Yeah. I, I know hate. why you like LimeWire though. Cause in the beginning, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, yeah. it was good. Bro, it was good. Whatever you want. It was elite. Yeah. You yeah. want the Pam and Tommy video? <laughs> two days. You got it. You'll have it. <laughs> I hate two days. Delivered. Fresh. In in 720. He went 480. 480. 480, Matt. Happy as hell. Happy as hell. Happy. Yeah. yeah. 240. Just, yeah. Just pixels and nibbles. It was beautiful. Pixels and nibbles. <laughs> we just going to throw that out. Shout out pixels in Riverside. Yeah. <laughs> it was oh, great. Man. All right, man. Curtis. Sorry, Come man. On. No, you good. This we is, appreciate this you coming time. through, man. No, this is this is just yeah. our spot. This is our good radio, man. We just here to vibe out. Yeah. Talk some shit. But no, it was some real gems. Mm-hmm. Real game spit. Where can people hear the album? By the time, let's see, by the time this comes out, right. it'll probably be coming out. We're going to drop this Friday. August 3rd. Oh, yeah. It's not So by out. next, so, so August pre-order. 3rd, pre-order is going to be there. You can basically go to curtisking.com. By the time you go there, I'll have this whole thing set up to where I'll make it easy as possible. What I'm doing is... Um, I say, we got a bundle. What we got? I know got you got something. You got marketing, bro. Come what on, you man. got? You like, ain't just dropping an album. I know it's something, you bro. You, don't, you know, shout out to OCC. You don't go there and not and not get the, the information <laughs> you got get, got given to you. So for mm-hmm. me, I look at it, and I used to be kind of like embarrassed of it because people would be like, why are you doing so much with the bundles? Because is it, does it mean like your music is not good? Like you got to make, you got to incentivize people. Now that's just the norm. But that's another story for another day. But I'm I doing, love it, though. No, what I'm, I'm doing it. now, though, I'm saying... I have so many more products since the last time we've done a campaign like this. And the campaign is basically this. You pay for the pre-order. You show me proof of the pre-order. You email it to a certain email. That email will be on the website, curtisking.com. And show me proof of it. I will send you one of my products, no matter what the price is, for the price of the pre-order, which is only $5.99. Why? Why? Because this is an exchange of something that means something to you. It's value to you, but this is valuable to me. For me to be able to say like, I have an album. I have two EPs that went number number you know number three on the hip hop iTunes chart, uh, or number four, whatever it was. Um, for me to say we did that shit again after I took a four or five year hiatus, right? It don't matter how that shit happened. You gotta ask questions. You mm-hmm. gotta be like, yo, who is this? And then you hear the music. 
Straight up. So for five dollars, five ninety nine, you can get a ninety seven. You can get a nine. I but a like hot a, six, I bro. I like an infomercial. From now the hold on. How about this? Are y'all ready? Five ninety nine. Fuck niggas' heads up. If yeah. you're in California. For a gallon of gas, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, for the yeah, one that's, gallon, one that's gallon crazy. Of gas. But yeah, but ain't that a bitch? <laughs> so basically, but you can only choose one. I'm gonna give you a list. And, and I'm, but yeah. hear me out though. Yeah. Not to cut you off, but it's not even about that. It's like, bro, we're spreading this to anybody, bro. Buy a few, yeah. Yeah. buy a couple, buy two or three. Get mm -hmm. two or three. For, like it's, it's an exchange because of value. you get that because you get the value. But he's trying. Yeah. People don't think about the other people that might can't get the the fifty dollar. <laughs> but you know what? I, you know what else though? I think about. I think about. That was put on my heart because when you are given, when you're given an epiphany, you're also burdened with the responsibility of seeing it through. And we don't like to hear that. We, we want to share it with somebody and have them help us bring this vision to life. But it's like, dog, that was given to you. And the reason nobody else understands is because you are in the shape and the form and the time to actually make that shit come true. But right. you're not stepping up to the plate. I'm looking at it like. What other artist slash music producer slash YouTuber is in a space where I can offer a ninety-seven or hundred and ninety-seven dollar course? I can teach somebody, give them. This we didn't kind even of get into that. I'm not even talking yeah. about the merchandise. Or yeah. I can give you a plug-in that I developed. I got all these different things that are represents the abundance. Mm -hmm. I'll exchange that just for five ninety nine because even though this is gonna mean something to you, that's gonna be more something to me. The fact that if I sit there and look at them charts. And we get up even higher than what we've been before. It don't mean matter about that, but just the idea of it. You see what that tells? Like kids who are right now working on a beat in FL studio, thinking is this shit ever gonna go anywhere? Right. Now you got an example of well, you may not have heard of him, but Curtis King uh, cracked the, the iTunes charts with that. Like he ran a campaign and it's worked. So I understand when you talk about legacy and those kind of points. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, those are the things that are gonna like they're gonna matter, not the accolades, but. We're not, who we are is not what we do, it's how we do it. Right. And if that's the case, then I'm looking at this and I'm saying, all right, for an exchange for your pre-order, I'm going to give you whatever you want from one of my stores and uh, to guarantee I get that pre-order. And then after that, let's see what it shits fall, where they fall. But at the end of the day, I just want people to enjoy DIY 2, uh, executive produced by my boy Jay Kasai, uh, mixed by the homie Oh Gosh, every beat's produced by me and um, a bunch of amazing musicians, Nobby and Aaron Barber, uh, lazy eye music. Uh, but this is me fully, fully, truly, truly independent, taking an eye, taking a chance on my ideas and allowing That's myself dope. to get out the way and allow my friends who have these great ideas to also suggest and be open to this. And uh, I feel like that's going to be all the difference. But I'm listening to the music. I'm seeing y'all reaction. Uh, that it serious, was crazy. That shit the made my week. The tracks are great, bro. Slaps. That dead ass made my all week slap. to see now, that. Honestly, I'm like, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't act, I didn't come here asking for nothing, but it was like, I just wanted to see if what we felt in the studio was real. Cause you can be around your boys and this right. shit is the greatest thing in the right. world. Right. And then you get to a show and it's like, no. like that's just the crowd, I'm different. gonna be real. They're definitely ready for to be on a loud PA system, mm. maybe a little pyrotechnics, maybe <laughs> a good visual in the Look, background. And can I say this? Can I say this? That. Can I say this? Especially for folks who are looking at their equipment and the shit they got and they're thinking like, Damn, I'm not serious. And nobody's gonna take me serious. The kind of music that I'm making right now, and this is not even like to boast and nothing like that, but it's like this shit sounds larger than the room that I created it in. Mm, that yeah. used to be somebody's bedroom. Yeah. Where we're renting this place. Like yeah. this house that we're in, that studio used to be somebody's bedroom. I made it from there on live stream in front of people for them to see all the ugliness of it, uh, all the good stuff, all the great moments, the bad moments. They saw all that. That's so vulnerable. That's crazy. It is, but I'm looking at it, bro, and I'm like, but who else is supposed to do this shit? Who would you rather do that shit? Like, yeah. not even like big, I'm just looking at it like, you have all these tools and things in front of you to be the first you. Stop looking for a mentor or somebody to be the example of you when it's like, God put that on you to do something that somebody gonna look at your Wikipedia and say, bet, by 37 he did this, all right, I'm gonna do this, so I'm gonna yeah. do that. Hey, so, that's uh, and that's enough. Grammy to yeah. 50, uh, 56 you know what I'm saying? So I, I look at it and, Nobody and I find- Nobody thinks about shit like that. You know hey, what I'm bro. saying? Yeah. I finally look in the mirror now, and, and this is the biggest accomplishment after this, after this album. Fuck the music, fuck all of that. I love it, but fuck all of that. The biggest accomplishment is I look in the mirror and I say, that's you. Love it. You're not trying to be nobody. You're not trying to do, that's you. Mm -hmm. And if they accept it or not, you walk away from there with your head up, understanding that 
that's what you had an idea and you thought it was worthy of putting it out there and you, let, you didn't let that shit be compromised for nobody, but we made this shit from home. They yeah. told me you need an SSL board and all this shit and you gotta have a major feature and you gotta do this and do this. And, and now that shit is from home. D on I FL Studio. DIY. Real shit. Coming out August 3rd. August 3rd. CurtisKing.com. CurtisKing.com. Get that pre-order. Get the pre-order. <laughs> we got the Prosperous Hip Hop Producer. That's also on CurtisKing.com. Everything Curtis. is finally centralized. I don't got a million websites. <laughs> yeah. oh, finally well. got that. And you got the YouTube course for producers also. YouTube, well, for, just for anybody in general. Like one of you my, have a podcast also now, too? I do, but I had to put it on halt for... Uh, I was going to say, you're so good at, like, I could, like, we could talk for, like, another four hours. Come on, Because we didn't even start talking to the journey. Yeah. We didn't go into tour stories. Yeah. We didn't talk about the Curtis King for paid dues. Nah, forget, the first, but, but, one of the first marketing campaigns I heard. You know what mm. I, I I recognize, though, and even in this this podcast era that we're in, and y'all are killing it, bro. I'm looking at Thank the you. networks you got. That's crazy, bro. Like, um, Appreciate that, honestly. What I love the most in this era is that, the the rock stars no longer reign supreme. Mm -hmm. yeah. The people who come in here and they're like, everything's about me. Like I ask y'all questions because I'm like this. These are to me. This is more valuable for me to be in this room with y'all than to be at you know like whatever you know this 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 popping ass love. pocket. Like yeah. it doesn't. That don't mean shit to me. The numbers don't mean shit to me. What means something to me is knowing that I'm gonna walk away from here feeling full and I'm gonna learn something. Hearing mm -hmm. you talk about the way that you handle yourself under pressure, the way that you've always kept like this very stoic way. Mm -hmm. I've always been curious about that. We've never even talked about it in person because it's like, yeah. what context can we do that? Yeah. Talking to you and hearing about the origin stories of how this stuff comes together, it makes me feel like maybe you're not so crazy mm -hmm. for, for, for doing yeah. the shit that you're, you're not. Doing. And I think that's the whole origin of our goons, you know? Like yeah. we, 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 we don't look like the typical whatever artist you right. think of, but we are. And that's the way, this is like our hideaway. This is like our place to actually do that, so. That shit is art in itself. That's, yeah. That shit is art in itself. Figuring that's, out, that's my saying goal. what's not being said is yeah. art in itself, I Well, feel like. it was always me at the mansion. Like, I was always around artists. I grew up around artists. Like, yeah. God bless me that I'm an artist. I don't physically do all the things my friends do, mm -hmm. but I know how to talk. And I know how to like tap in and be have empathy for mm. artists and give artists that 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 space to feel free to do it. You have a you have a good taste and a good ear, which is very important. Super important. As, true. As a, you know, as a DJ, you can't yeah. just be playing whatever all the time because it's hot. <laughs> no, I can't. I'm a, you gotta but know. I, it's, I guess it's really the servitude in me. Like yeah. I know I'm a servant to the crowd. I'm a servant to the vibe. I'm a servant to yeah. what it is because at first I thought it was me, and when I thought it was me, I got it, but it got taken away very quickly. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> very. very very fast. The quicker it came, the quicker it went. Shout out! I know you guys are wrapping up, but I, I, no, shout, out, shout out to the homie uh, Vic, man. He uh, he used to tell me he was like, because he was like very big on like uh, Chicano history, and you were even like big on like like uh, like the Black Panther history. But he would always tell me he was like, even the revolution had barbecues. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking for your purpose as a musician, as a creative, as an artist, as whatever you're doing. Even the revolutionaries had barbecues. It takes that time, yeah. Because what do you do at barbecues? You're not sitting there talking about what well, the next thing we got to do is make sure that the man don't like. No, you you you're doing Chilling. you part you partaking in whatever yeah. you partaking. You yeah. enjoying the company of your family and your friends, and it's like they don't always show that side when they're talking about biopics and things. But it's like even the revolutionaries the, had barbecues, and that's the part I like seeing about yeah. artists. I like I like being at the barbecue. To me, mm -hmm. this represents that because it's like. It shows you, like, when people come to me, I know what's going to happen. They're going to come to me and be like, man, I saw that interview that you had there, and, like, that changed my perspective on some things. That is all that I need. And that's that's why I drive out to L.A. for y'all. That's for, love, for, for most folks, I'm going to be like, yeah, let's figure it out. <laughs> I love it. Like, nah, this was more. something I was like, I'm, I told my wife, I say, hey, I'm leaving here at 7.30. I'm going to be there at 9. It's going to I love it. Yeah. And shout out, shout yeah. out, everybody. Shout out your family. And, Appreciate and honestly, you. Curtis, thank you, man. Yeah. And coming on the show means a lot to me. We watched you. I mean, my big bros was here. I seen you do it. But honestly, I grew up to your whole movement. I grew up going out and seeing that thing. So even yeah. having you on the show and having you be a part of it, that's a blessing. Humble. Man. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. So yeah. go to CurtisKing.com. Yeah. DIY 2 yeah. coming out August 3rd. 
Um, Ring, anything you see before we get up out of here? Any exclusive? Uh, new drop? collection next month. I'm not oh. going to give a date until I, I have some more. You know, I don't like giving dates and then be like, ah. <laughs> you know what? Push back two I weeks. Feel yeah. I feel it. I'm not going to give a date until I have a little more <laughs> grasp on everything that's coming out. But next month, new UTB collection, UTB summer. And I love it. Yeah. That's hey. It. Um, my energy podcast, the all audio podcast is coming. I have to have you come back on that Man, one. Please soon. do, please it's do. It's all about literally. I just want to know what keeps you going. Yeah. What is your what's your chi? What yeah. is it? You know, some people have things. So it's my energy. It's I it's I N N E R capital G. Okay. So it's like my inner gangster, basically. Mm. I kind of played it a little bit, you know, some murder shit. Okay, go ahead then. Shout out Lupe though. I took that from him though. I'm gonna be real. Cause like, he's like, I get my energy from, from my, my energy. energy. I was like, yeah, oh I'm, yeah. yep, thank yeah. you. So yeah, I'll give him Lupe so he don't call me out like on high 97 or something <laughs> later on in life. I fuck with you, my nigga. You got it. You did it. All right, do you if you need the dough, let me get paid first. Like we can talk about it. All right. So anyway, nah, real shit though. Um, yeah. for this podcast, go to bigcaliworld.com. Go to Big Cali World YouTube page, subscribe. Um, Argun Radio, Big Cali World's on there. Also, for your podcast needs, go to ProductiveCulture.com backslash podcast. In the How Did You Hear About Us section, put in Big Cali World, Argun Radio. Put Curtis King told me that Productive Culture will get him a good deal mm -hmm. and actually a great consultation. Put Reem told me, whatever yeah. it takes, UTV. <laughs> just put it in the How Did You Hear About Us section, okay? Yeah. And you will get that special rate. We got all the deals, all the packages. We got you. Make sure you I, come with money, though. Yeah. Yeah, we come in with money. This ain't no hookup shit. Don't be shit. asking for shit. Make sure you ready. And don't you text show. me talking about, hey, I want to get a podcast. What's up? Like, no, just hit up yeah, ProductiveCulture.com backslash podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's what you Again, do. Again, <laughs> in the how did you hear about a section, <laughs> put in. I'm going to switch it. Also, man, let's see. For all your studio needs, trust me, forget about that. Can't forget it. For all your studio needs, your rentals, Knockhouse, LA, we here. Get the rooms. Can, you see, we're in the palms right now. Can I just say, I, can I, can I, can I get my my, my commercial spiel? For Go that? ahead. Go ahead. Uh, this is my first time here, and I'm blown away at what I see. We appreciate um, that. It's one thing to invest into a location when you have those studio needs. It's one thing, and it's also another thing to invest in the energy. And every single room, you can tell there's care that went into it, and everybody in here looks comfortable. Being here, very comfortable, and it's right. yeah. there's these studios that are so sterile it ends up being like plastic in grandma's living room. That you can't touch. You can't <laughs> I know touch. What you, you feel mean. uncomfortable. Nah, I know you what like, you, mean, for sure. I, you don't even want to. Right. Like, this is an environment that feels like home, and I here I am an hour and a, and a half away from home. That's something that you can't just Chilling. create. You can't just buy that. Drove so, out here from San Diego for us. Man. Oh shit, yeah. for real? Yeah. All love, yeah. man. Oh, damn. All love, man. Okay. I'll be back because I. Uh, the environment that you made here is, is real. Uh, it made me feel comfortable as an artist, even playing the music and and, and being able to do that. So, right. if I can be any kind of, con, con, if I can be any kind of convincing for somebody who's like, I've been I've been thinking about, uh, yeah, 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 go go and do this shit. Then. We here, mm -hmm. hit us yeah. up, Knockhouse LA, hit up the Instagram, hit up Rare Fat Play, hit me up. I'm here, it's all feeling good, feeling great as usual. We here, yes, UTV sir. Lifestyle, you know, yeah. which which website, you know, you got UTV like Life that style. <laughs> I got, I got like, like three. I got three. You got two <laughs> websites. I can't keep up. I'm not going to talk. I yeah. need to be yeah, one more time. 20 of them, UTB Life Style. That's the hub where you can get in contact with any of the artists that is the UTB involved. But you can go to utbnft.com. You can go to utblifestyle.store if you only want clothes. If you don't care about anything else about UTB, you just, I just want swag. Go to utblifestyle.store. And then you can go to rareargo.com to tap in with your boy if you want a painting. You know what I'm saying? If you want some type of commission work that I could do for you, maybe you, you might want to hit me up for an interview. I don't know. Do you Go do body art yet? Home. I've done that at Coachella. I think we should get into that, bro. I'm with that. After this past weekend, I've been thinking about it, man. Yeah, I went to yeah, a, yeah. I seen what you was yeah, on. Yeah, it was I the whole that. thing. We'll talk about, that, we yeah. talked about that on the podcast. It's coming out. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah. the next. I seen <laughs> that. <laughs> it's yeah. coming in. Can I, can I timestamp this? When I get the home of my dreams, I'm commissioning work from you. Cool. We I have it right here, right here, right here first. That is cool. going, that if that some if that one day is the one thing I gotta hear, then that's the one thing yeah, I gotta hear. That I'm, that that will be done. I, I and I'm gonna pay you whatever that 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 high price is. We are gonna do that, <laughs> make it happen yep. because uh, I need the the environment to be blessed with that energy for sure. Off uh, top, when we coming through, man. But anyway, man. Curtis, I appreciate you, brother, for real, for real, man. Appreciate you. Yeah. You're welcome back anytime, man. man I appreciate you. And it's the man with the plan. I ain't Clark Campbell, some of the ladies do call me Superman. It's your boy, Big Cali. Dream half rare art goon. Curtis King. Two S's. <laughs> <laughs> like Zargoon Radio, man. Peace. <laughs>